course all the time. What we need to first do before we even start this quiz sure. is we need to decide the criteria that we're judging this off of. Exactly. Because if we don't come to common criteria, right. we're going to judge these videos. ranking list and what would be best is if we both did it on the same screen can you pull up the list on your phone uh not the list the end of the list but the website where you choose which oh, one yeah yeah yeah. because what we'll do is we'll make up the criteria as we as go, we go and see if we can come up with and i and i believe one. well we'll just go through it's going to give us options of movies though though i will say this could you remember what you had as your original top three and what you had as your original top three or lower three like did you have guardians of the galaxy ant-man and thor ragnarok as your top three um, no, you did not. In my newest one that I sent you? Because I think my newest one is my most best one. Yeah, yeah. I want uh, Civil War, Guardians, and Winter Soldier. Okay, so we. I also agree those are great, fantastic movies. And then it looks like you have Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, and Thor Dark World. I think this is going to be yeah. very, Incredible very easy. Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, Thor Dark World. We are going to have a very easy time doing this because I'm. But what we'll do is um, we'll actually pull up. I accidentally broke my phone. Latin uh, yesterday, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I have had it in the case and everything. All right, all right. Let me get to the website. Probably. Yeah. Let's see who pulls up first. I sent you the link for take the quiz. So. You sure did. I got it right here. Yep. Let's go. Um, did yours start out with Iron Man two and Thor? My Iron Man and Infinity War. Uh, we should probably just go off of one then. Okay. Because yeah. if we do it off of two, we're probably not. Gonna... Absolutely. You want to do it off yours because my yeah. screen's cracked? Yeah, yeah, my screen's not cracked. You can do it off mine. Okay. Not so, that will make that big of a difference. But. So this starts with Iron Man 2 and Thor. Wow. Okay. So already, so we'll, so we'll, already we're lower down in the bottom of the list. So let's, let's, let's talk about what we're doing real quick. Right now, what we're going to do is there is roughly 15 MCU movies in existence right now. Now roughly, that Infinity War yeah. has come out. We're going to determine the greatest of all time and the worst of all time at that list. We're going to have a list of 15, mm -hmm. and we'll ultimately determine the greatest of all time or the worst of all time. What we need to first do before we even start this quiz sure. is we need to decide the criteria that we're judging this off of. Exactly. Because if we don't come to common criteria, right. we're going to judge these movies in two different ways, Yes. and we won't come to an agreement. And not only that, but also for people watching, can you unlock the screen real quick? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're using, so. I'll put the link at the bottom of this video, but basically what we're doing is using a website that ranks two mo puts two movies at a time, sort of like a terminate bracket, and at the end it says basically who won the bracket and then who lost. And in this yeah. case, the person who wins is the greatest MCU movie of all time, the person at the bottom was worst MCU movie of all time. Yeah. So I would say um, what I value my criteria is judging movies in their own right and not based on any of the other previous movies. Like as an insular oh, so example. So we already we already kind of do this differently then. Okay. Cuz when I watch since these are a a timeline I as I see it. Yes. I am judging how well the movie develops the characters. Yes. Cuz the In one that of the most specific movie the one of the most important things to me is character development. Yes. When I when I watch fin when I watch fiction movies. Yes. In general. So what I'm saying is, if there's two movies called like Squirrel Girl One and Squirrel Girl Two, and Squirrel Girl Two has better arcs of the characters, then that's the better movie. Even if Squirrel Girl One came out first and set the tone and was like iconic. What I want like, is this like was a better. Movie. I want the movie to. I I I but I do somewhat. Relevate the make a relative look at another movie before that one. Hmm. So, for instance, if I they, watch Iron Man, yes, I'll judge Iron Man's character on how he's set up in Iron Man, yes. And when I watch Iron Man 2, I go, What has happened to Tony's character since Iron Man 1? Now, in Iron Man 2, that his character has grown, exhibited the traits that were established in Iron Man 1. Uh, exhibited his morality mm. as he has established i want to make sure that because this is a universe and they're right. trying to set up a cinematic timeline yes i am judging these movies as a timeline sure I if these were standalone movies with different actors and different performers and different imagine imagine jumping into a comic book i just want to make one yeah, point yeah, yeah, yeah. i just don't want to give because they all take place in the same universe so they're technically all sequels to each other I just don't want to give movies at the end of the timeline more points because they had more no, stuff to base things off of than I don't, movies at the start. I don't, I'd say I don't do that because there are some later movies where 
characters make decisions that I'm like, no, no, yes. this was not established yes. in a previous movie yeah. that makes sense for this character yeah, to yeah, do. Yeah. Oh, know? okay, okay, so sure. So it, it would actually come sure. as a strike against that. Okay, okay. So, so it works for and against movies later in the timeline. I think we have a good initial criteria to start, and then from there we can like modify it as we continue. So what do we have right now? Iron Man 2 and Thor, which are going to be two hard movies to judge. Because we both don't because, like these movies. Well... That's one, but we're gonna <laughs> we're going to have to judge them based on something other than character. So character is one criteria I judge. Right. But if you're setting up two movies like this against them, mm. I have to go. Iron Man Two is a continuation of Iron Man's character, so it's not setting up the understanding of Tony's character. We already have an understanding of sure. Tony's character. Uh, but, but Thor, no. Thor is an initial movie for setting up Thor as a character. Sure. So they're going to make two different methods of setting up. Thor. You're saying Iron Man 2 comes into it with the advantage of the previous movie coming into it, so it might be harder to make that comparison. Still, for character. in that movie, that's why I'm saying, in this movie well, specifically... Well, we can choose these movies, yeah, from based on just the how end, the characters are in this movie. Was there a good dynamic range of the acting? Was the score memorable? Like, was oh, it, like, really I, interesting? I, I, like, I like those things. Was it a good film? I, like, was, I, will, I will tell you this. Two of, the, two of my top things that I judge movies off of, character development... Whether it's from the start of the movie to the end of the movie or yes. from the start of the un MCU universe to the end of it. Yes. I, I do character development. So okay. for these movies, I'm going to do from the start of the movie to the end of the movie. Okay. I would argue that, and let me make sure I get this right, um, Loki is actually a better villain than Whippy Man who's oh, in yeah. this movie. Yeah, I'll agree. But the main protagonist is much better in Iron Man 2 than Thor in the original the Thor main protagonist, o OG I can Thor understand it is uh, is this OG Thor with Natalie Portman as yeah, the romance interest yeah. like it was played as a romance movie for the most part most there's a lot of Shakespearean esque yeah, talking that character tries to tell the movie whenever Thor's I think it's only to be like on a screen to age story for Thor though I agree but whenever Thor it's by itself is on screen he doesn't have the attitude and charisma as he does in like Ragnarok Oh, yeah. When I'm watching that movie, I'm bored because I'd rather have Loki on screen. And Loki hasn't had the chance to do those machinations yeah. yet, to, like, backstab people and be like, yeah. ooh, he backstabbed these characters I appreciate. Okay. Whereas with the Whippy Man, you know, he's working for a guy who's Tony Stark's father cro got cro betrayed by mm -hmm. Tony Stark's dad. So he's kind of like, he, he he invented the original Iron Man suit pr prototypes, mm -hmm. yet Tony Stark is now the famous man for it. So, like, he has a good motivation. Even though he's a silly-looking guy with mm -hmm. whips, he has good motivation to do the things that he does. And it's fleshed out in a really interesting way. And there's no Mandarin, I think, in Iron Man 2. No, that's Iron Man 3. That's Iron Man 3. Wait, Iron Man 3 was probably the weakest villains of them all, but a good character setting on Tony Stark. But I would say, between the two, you have a really good, interesting main character, Tony Stark. He's dealing with his demons, and that will be something that will be explored on future, but it's like the nice start of that. Mm -hmm. I think you introduce Black Widow in this movie as well, Iron Man 2. Um, I'm not sure. Like, It's been a little bit since Is she I've in the poster? It. Is she on the poster on the left-hand side? Yeah. Yep, that's the first time she was ever on screen as a character, and she's a great contribution to the series of role. Yep. I think she's not played for her sex appeal, but she's played like as a straight professional. Yeah. Absolutely plutonic girl that's just really badass. Mm-hmm. And then you have Thor, which doesn't really have that, and has all the women glamoring over his biceps and, yeah, uh, and yeah. six packs and stuff. I would um, say Iron Man 2 is a better movie. Because I would that. say Iron Man 2 in this case is a better movie. Cool. It doesn't have to take this long for each one, though. But no, yeah, no, no. Sure. But what I... You say your criteria that I judge it on. My, sure. The criteria I, ju I judge most movies on is, first things first, character development. Okay. Second things... Second is your better character development in Iron Man 2? Yes. Okay, I agree. Uh, all those... The only... I, I judge it on a whole composition of all the characters. Got it. There's more characters developed than Iron Man 2. Great. You understand the, absolutely true. You understand the characters better in Iron Man 2. Yeah, absolutely. Because in the only characters you understand their their motives, their outcomes, whatever, so be it. Yeah. And Thor is basically Thor, and at the end of it, maybe Loki. Yeah. But, and not to mention Thor has some pretty bad villains compared to Iron Man's Whippy Whip Man. You yeah. had Thor with that bucket iron dude who shoots fire yeah. out of his armpits. Yeah. Not cool. Yeah. Let's move on. So, Iron Man 2. Iron Man 2 wins. Okay. And now we're at Iron Man 3 and Guardians of the Galaxy 2, and I can instantly tell you which one I'm picking. Guardians of the Galaxy 2? Yeah. Yeah, I would say so as well. Yeah, if you don't want to go... If you want to go over why... I would only say because there's a greater set cast of characters in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Iron Man 3, 
has one of the worst villains of all the movies, that fake Mandarin. Fake Mandarin is bad. Fake Mandarin's bad. But it's a good character study. Plus, it's study the on one Iron. where Tony Stark's like, I'm going to stop being Iron Man. And I'm like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. excuse me? There's some really funny moments like, in Iron Man 3. Excuse me, no. And it's a cool <laughs> to see Tony Stark out of his suit. But mm-hmm. it's not as compelling of a movie as some of the narratives that are told yeah. in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Uh, also, better soundtrack. I think Guardians has a better composition mm. of the movie. The yeah. movie looks better, sure. plays better. Uh, the pacing is good. Yes. Um, the storyline is really good. You have the characters that split off into two different things. And I didn't like that so much, but I appreciated the ballsiness of it. They well, didn't all have to be with each other the yeah. whole time. Yeah. Uh, and I think even though they split off, the cast is still good in their own yes. representative forms. I will say this. Upon... Garden of the Galaxy 2 does the sin of introducing the possibly the worst character in the MCU universe, which is Mantis. She is a creepy slug. She's she, a weird character, but she has interesting powers. She has interesting powers, but that is her only good trait. Yeah. And everything else about her is creepy and, and weird. And and truthfully, she's a really powerful character, and we'll get that to that argument sure. when we get to Infinity sure. War. Sure, sure. Let's go for or it. Or if you want to even make the claim for this movie. I just her think... Her power in this movie is to sedate the mind of what is basically this universe's god. Yeah, but she's just really poorly characterized. Oh, she has a very interesting character. She is straight up an extra from uh, Good Morning Vietnam oh. with slug and yeah. with piccolo to yeah, antenna and black yeah. eye buggles. I'm but like, no, that's gross. I think Guardians it's the 2 better. is better. I think so as well. Yeah. All right. Okay. The Incredible Hulk and Iron Man. Man, I'm, we're starting at the bottom. <laughs> I, I like Iron Man, but I am going to admit my bias. Iron Man is my favorite Marvel character. So Iron Man 1 this, is the better movie. Iron Man 1 is the better it movie. It might even be the best Iron Man movie. It is definitively, but we, in my opinion, the best Iron Man movie. We, we can cross that bridge when we get there. But yeah, I would say just from arc, from beginning to end, you have a completely different Tony Stark from beginning to the very end of the movie. Yes. The same consistent. You know, the Tony criteria. Stark that at the beginning, he's like, weapons for everyone. I'm selling weapons. Yes. And I have it, no he remorse realizes, for anybody. He realizes that's a dangerous ideology yes. to live in. If I give weapons to everybody, right. people do bad things. And he's with atoning them. by turning himself into a weapon. And he atones by saying, "No, no, no! I'm going to rain all this power that I've created in. Yeah. I'm the only one that gets to have it. I'm the only Which one is very that should selfish, be selfish." But he's putting himself at risk the most in this but case. He's not if saying, you understand "Here's a gun, Iron shoot Man's someone." Character yeah. as and and you'll see this throughout the arcs of the yeah. entire MCU. Yeah. Iron Man is constantly trying to do what's best for everyone. Right. And sometimes... At a complete detriment to at himself. At a complete detriment to himself. Putting... Even if, even if it costs him his life, right. he still will try it. I will say this, though. The Incredible Hulk has the best Bruce Banner in Ed Norton. Agree. Okay. That's all I'm saying. It's, uh, it's that is the, Ed Norton's Incredible Hulk, yeah, right? Yeah, it is literally... Because yeah, I know they yeah, switched it to what's... It's Ed uh, What's his face? Bruce Ruffalo? Ruffalo, yeah, right. Yeah, Ruffalo. And I don't have an issue with Ruffalo. I just think Ed Norton's a better actor. Uh, yes. And I would also say um, the scenes where you have Ed Norton by himself who, when he's not transformed are like the best scenes from that movie. And that's saying yeah. something in a Hulk movie. Yeah. Because Ruffalo, I, the best scenes are when he's Hulk. Yeah. So Ruffalo plays a really good Hulk. Puny God. Like that's the only scene yeah. that people from before but, from Avengers. They don't say any Ruffalo scenes. But I think that Ed Norton is a better Bruce Banner. That's, yes. yes. Like, like for instance, when we, just a quick side note. When you talk about like uh, Batman, yeah, I think that the Dark Knight trilogy are probably the best Batman movies. But I think that definitive uh, best Batman is animated series Batman. Oh yeah, well, yeah, by far. But, okay, yeah, but that's just because I didn't know if that's Kevin, where you're going with that's it. That's just because Kevin. Kevin best, Conroy, yeah, yeah, is amazing. Anyway, anyway, anyway. For Batman. okay, what? Let's keep going. So Iron Man is Iron Man wins. Iron Man, that's wins. easy. Captain America Civil War, Doctor Strange. Civil War, easy. I, I will agree. Okay, yeah. Okay. Just character growth is amazing. Character in that movie. makes sense. Yeah. Doctor Strange is a knockoff Iron Man. Uh, Doctor Strange is a worse knockoff Iron Man. Yes, that's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Spider Man Homecoming and Guardians. Oh, you're going to hit now, me with that. Now we're getting to we're at the top. difficult ones. Okay, so here's my I think argument. the bottom of the list is going to be easy for yeah. us and the top's going to be hard. I am going to say that Guardians of the Galaxy I is a more full Guardians. picture of. Peter Quill as a character mm-hmm. than Peter Parker from Homecoming Starring Man because you already start off with I think the shortcoming that Spider-Man Homecoming gets is that it doesn't it doesn't set up why we know why Peter Quill it's a great movie but you don't get to learn from scratch right 
Yeah, so I'm saying that desperate... Peter Quill's why is because his mother died. He got picked up by there you go. You're right. People who knew you understand his, his motivation. His true underlying motivations. Yeah. You understand those and way more. You understand once his adult character is introduced, why he's doing in that situation what he's doing. Right. You don't understand that with Spider-Man. Not only that, but soundtrack in Guardians of the Galaxy it's is so almost good. iconic it's, to that it's, whole franchise. Yeah. And I can't tell you a single song from Spider-Man. No, because it's all. It's just all scores. It's just. It's it's all scores. Was there any? There, for, was, there were songs the, in there, from, but I just can't remember. From the any minute, of from the minute that somebody starts going ooga chaka, ooga, yeah, 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 you hey. know, you know that hooked on a feeling's like, coming on, and you get you're goosebumps, hyped. and it's yeah. like it's that was that's that song from you're that like, movie. That's that song from yeah. Garden. And it's a great. It's, it's hard to make a good soundtrack, especially one that's made out of all commercial music. Mm -hmm. They did a great job. They with did it. a good job, and there were scores in there as well. But Guardians, I think Guardians is the definitive choice there. Winter Soldier and Ant Man. I know you really like Ant-Man. All right. I know you really like Ant-Man. All right. I know. I, let me at least just say why I really like Ant-Man. Yeah, I know. Ant-Man is, again, in a... It, I will... I'm not even saying in the time that it came out, but it is very much a insular movie. I will say it is probably one of the best heist movies that exists. It, it was... So both of these movies are examples of... Oh, superhero movies can be more than just about superheroes. They could be spy thrillers, like yep, Winter Soldier, like or they could be heist movies, like Ant Man. So that's why a, I like both of these movies. I like both of these movies. I, I, if we are basing it solely on character development, Scott Lang in prison to Scott Lang as Ant Man is a much more greater arc than Scott Rogers as super awesome spy in Shield to not being in Shield anymore. Um. I see this if I'm just judging it based on the movie because we agreed that's what we're doing it's right. just judging these movies based on just their movies because yes. like what I could do is say that like from Captain America Winter Soldier right. from Captain America the first adventure to Captain America Winter Soldier right art but I will grant you that within these movies solely by themselves Captain America has a much more it's a great movie but his arc is not as great as Scott Lang's in these two movies. Correct. Yeah. Now, I will grant you that the character development... Like your glasses. Thank you. The character development of Scott Lang is better. Character development of Scott Lang is better. I will grant you that the plot of them both are kind of... They're kind of cliche. I would say that. I will give that to you. I'll give but that to you. But if you want to have the movie that has the, I think, better storyline... In my opinion, it would be Winter Soldier because what we see in the storyline is a major twist that we see that Shield is Shield has Hydra is, in it. Shield is it's basically actually Hydra. not the good guys all the time, and yes. they do have nefarious characters. It's a within fantastic them. movie. Here's my thing: there's something to be said about stakes. Mm -hmm. The stakes in Are Winter too Soldier higher in Winter Soldier. The stakes too are... Too high to the point where it feels diluted. Like, is the whole world at danger? Or is it the government organization that's in danger? Does he like Bucky? Does he not like Bucky? Is this computer that's a Nazi? Mm -hmm. So are Nazis back? There's a lot so, of things going on. But in, in, in Ant-Man, it is a linear focus on, I love my daughter. Mm -hmm. I'm, just trying to, I'm, I'm just trying to protect my family. Yeah. And even though we're both like tiny little bugs fighting on a train set, the stakes feel appropriate. For yeah. the fight that's going on. Okay. And you're emotionally invested because you like the girl. So Cassie's great. Yeah, here's what we're going to do. Okay. I'm going to grant you Ant-Man. Okay. But on a side note, I wanted to put this into your mind for sure. an argument for Winter Soldier maybe in the in context the, in, of in, an entire universe. Okay, okay. You see Captain America is a very do whatever it takes for my country, die for my country, yes. fight for my country. You get that in it is very the first Avenger. country focused. Yes. It is doing what is best... And he, he has a very good trust of the people around him. Sure. Winter Soldier introduces the fact that that the the government, the people that he trusts all this time, maybe aren't worth trusting at all times. I get you. And that there is betrayal that happens within the government, within large organizations that he doesn't He see. goes from a blind patriot and, to a and conspiracy the theorist. And by the time you get to Civil War, yeah. you can completely understand why Captain America says... Hell fuck no. Right. Sorry language. 
I am not letting the government have say whether we go in and save people or not. Right. Because I know that there are nefarious characters who will subvert the government at times. And I we get it. cannot trust them. I get it. But if yeah. if if we're going to base it on anything else too, there's like something what I consider chemistry among the cast. That, uh, what's his name? Julio Pena. Who's, oh, yeah. Is insanely funny yep. and gets along with uh, Ryan Reynolds perfectly. Yet you no, also no, no. Ha- huh? Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd. I'm sorry. Paul oh, Rudd. it was like You're Ryan right, Reynolds. Right, right. Paul Rudd. <laughs> you also get uh, Ava. Lang- what's your A- name? Ava, Ava Longoria? Longoria. Yeah. Yeah. She's good Great. Character. You got um, Michael Douglas. Yeah. Thrown in there. Mm-hmm. Great. You get Cassie, the girl actor. It's hard to get kid actors. Great. Every like you have the 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 his ex wife and the mm-hmm. cop buddy who's like. I don't know. I don't like you, but I also kind of like you. I don't know. Yeah. But I also don't like you, but I don't hate you personally. I yep. just don't trust you, and I think you're a bad influence on the kid. But mm-hmm. I want you to be a good influence. Yeah. I want you to see the kid. I want you to be a good dadter. Like, yep. I get everyone there, and they all just feel like a mm-hmm. family, and they get along really well. They have a good character. In, in Winter actually. Soldier, like, you got, like, I don't know, Scar jo there. You got Chris very, Rogers. You got Samuel very, L. Jackson. It's, like, it's very that cast, but the reason it is that close-knit cast is because the rest of the people... Those are the people Steve can absolutely trust. True, but I also don't feel like when the cameras are off, they hang out with each other. Oh, I don't that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel like even the actors themselves yeah, they have can... characters that like don't maybe, really hang out with each other. Maybe like, maybe Chris and Skojo do, but I don't know about. Not even like in the universe, they feel like they would have a beer with each other uh, yeah. afterwards. It feels very like distant. Like I am well, like my said, job, you are your job. Like I like said, that. as the as. Movies by themselves, yeah. I will grant Ant Man. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Thor Ragnarok, Thor Dark World. This I, is easy. This is easy. This is a slam dunk, Ragnarok. Yeah. It's Dark amazing. Dark World is, def- I, in my opinion, the worst Thor movie. It's probably the worst. It is the worst Thor the movie. The worst Thor movie. It has the worst motives. It has the Potentially worst. Potentially the bad worst guy. movie on uh, the whole. It was world. at the bottom of my list. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's go. how bad I think Dark All right. World is. Thor Ragnarok, one of the great. I just want to point him out. One Thor okay. Ragnarok, one of the greatest MCU movies. I know we're not comparing against all the movies right now, mm-hmm. but just in the sense of you had two mediocre, to b- terrible Thor movies, and they were like, "Let's give it one more shot and put more money into it." Mm-hmm. And they were like, "Really? Yes. Let's just take as much risk as we possibly can. Let's get a great theme song. Let's get a different director and see what they can do with it. See what they can do with it." I and think, it blew my freaking mind. I think Thor Ragnarok is a movie that you have to have to understand why Thor is the way he is in Infinity War. Right. And it was also Without the, that movie, you would look at the past two Thor movies and yes. you're like, why is he acting this way in Infinity War? He's completely different. You have no reason Completely why. different. Thor Ragnarok, you see the entire... You see... He shed his whole hair, everything. You see, it's great. You see immense amount of loss that he has to go through. Absolutely. You see... Yet so much humor at the same time, yeah. too. It's a greatly balanced movie. But you feel like the humor directed. is there because... And I guess you finally see this in Infinity War. He's he's having to keep that humor and that mindset. Yeah. Because as soon as he gets a real moment, he, like, you're like, this dude this feels This guy's lost. scarred. Yeah. Because he lost his entire He lost an eyeball. World. He lost his sister. He lost his father. He thinks he lost his brother. He lost everybody. His people. Yeah. Everything. His land. He yeah, watched his own world explode. Get torn apart. This is a broken man. Yeah. Yeah, he's cracking jokes, but you feel it but inside you, of him. But you understand This movie's that, great. Yeah. So, we're what? now at... Captain America, the first Avenger, and the Avengers. The Avengers is the better movie. I agree. I will agree that the Avengers is both the better from movie. the feat of getting all everyone together yep. to actually having the full arc of that whole team go from we don't want to work together to we are now working I together think, on a certain. I thing. think in a I think in a situation where they could have done a sloppy reason to throw the team together. Yes, this was a good. Things are at stakes where all these characters would want to come in right. and be there to, to take Can care I also of. throw out one thing, too? But in the case of Thor Ragnarok, brilliantly directed, mm-hmm. Avengers also brilliantly directed. Oh, yeah. Such to the point that people are still trying to... Is that Josh Whedon that Yeah, directed? Josh Whedon. Yeah, people Josh People are still good. trying to not mimic, but, like, get the Whedon-esque feel in every other it, movie I that came out after Avengers. I think it's honestly what slap the DCU into trying to be in existence is they went I think we can do that yes. we can argue whether they did or did not do sure, it with sure, Justice sure. League but I think the Avengers was something where they're like this is a great payoff for what we've been building but what I'm saying is that weed in us movie in Avengers was the first time they were like oh this is a style that people like let's keep trying to do that and you will see that in every other movie past Avengers 
them trying to slip in jokes, but not doing it as right. well as he did. Right. He did it the best time yeah. then. Yep, he did. Avengers is the best time Agreed. that was ever happened. Hey, it's fine. Let's go for it. Next argument. Black Panther or Infinity War? Black Panther and Infinity War. I don't have a very high opinion of Infinity War. We've had this discussion. I have my issues with it, but... You think it's a better movie than Black Panther? <sighs> I don't know. I'm kind of apathetic to both of these movies, to be perfectly honest with you. When it comes down to this movie, I have to honestly go... I would say Thanos is a better villain than Killmonger. Thanos is a better villain than Killmonger. But... If Black Panther is better directed than Infinity War, which was just a mess from beginning to end. Plus, you don't know when it, how it ends. Yeah. You, that is a two-act movie. That is definitely a two-act movie. Um, I think the shortcomings of I think the shortcomings of maybe Black Panther would be the composition of the movie. Okay, sure. Yeah. It, it one, it feels very rushed. Okay. Two. Uh, I think the way that the the stakes were set up in the movie, like, it's kind of dumb stakes. Well, when they do that whole situation where like, oh, he's dead, but psych, he's not really dead because he's alive, and I'm like, why? I get it. Why even do that kind of? If if we are grading this movie on character development, there is character arcs in Black Panther. There is non-existent arcs for every character in Infinity War. It is an incomplete Infinity War movie lacks character arcs because it's relying off of you seeing the character arcs in the movies before. So Not when, only that, but So when judged been. by itself, it is a very weak movie. We don't know, even know where it ends. Like, and we don't know where it ends yet. Like, we, li we literally don't know. Like, yeah. that is a bump, bump. Yeah. I don't see how you rank that higher than Blind Panther. Uh, in this context, in this criteria... You can change the criteria if you want to, but I'm just saying, No, no, like, no. We, we, it doesn't we, seem we like it makes to, sense. We stuck to definitive criteria. Would you be comfortable saying Black Panther is a better movie than Infinity War? I think Thanos as a villain has... He's a more empathetic villain than Killmonger. I Probably think he's a better. more... That's what I mean by better. I think he's a bet... I think he's more empathetic, more... You can see... You can see his viewpoint better than, I guess... I, I'm not really good at saying why Killmonger's viewpoint. I, I wouldn't be the one who. Oh no no no! Don't say it that way. I think Killmonger's viewpoint is sort of like a weird. How do I put it? Ultra flanderization of like stigmatized. It's did we get? We're gonna get super political if we go into this. I don't think he's an accurate representation of the things that he's trying to fight for. Like I feel like Correct. he, and I don't think that. His ultimate goal of, I'm going to be the king of Wakanda, what's the first thing you do? Give weapons to black people. Like, no. What are no. you... That doesn't even resolve the, any of the issues that you were talking about by institutionalized yeah. imbalances of power. It's like, yeah, we're going to get the guns and we're going to get the vibranium I mean, and buy things and take his, the streets. And his, like, thing you is, had, his thing is, he, I can understand his, his viewpoint from my, from my view hmm. is that... Things that have been done negatively to him have been done through people with power. He now has all the power he has that he all could the power. possibly He's have literally on the king. Earth. He has all and the weapons, first all thing the money, he's all going the technology. To do is do exactly what the people that did him wrong. He's going to do the same back. Exactly. He's it literally is, just flipping the roles of the it racism is not, and just it is not giving power to yeah to, to do. people who have dark skin instead of the white skin. And the reason I think that Thanos is the better villain hmm. is because Thanos is not trying to do this out of out of some sort of revenge scheme. True. Thanos truly believes that what he's going to do is going to be the betterment of the universe. I get you. And if it was called the Thanos movie and the Killmonger movie, Thanos movie oh, yeah. wins. But the thing is, Infinity War has a lot of problems from a directorial oh, point of view. Oh, yeah. It keeps restarting seven times in the movie because it's telling the movie from like the perspective of seven that's, different franchises. That's why I think the movie fails. So it goes and then it starts in resetting. cohesiveness. And four out of the three re seven restarts have a love story in them oh, which yeah. are unnecessary because I don't really care about the character's love story. So Black uh, uh, Hulk and Scarlet Joe Hansen's yeah, yeah. character I don't care about that. Yeah. Uh, Gamora and Peter Quill like it's more funny to just have it as a playful sort of platonic thing not only that but a lot of characters act out of character Infinity War did a bad job at Peter Quill and Gamora's relationship thank you Guardians 2 did it better yes you understand better their situation in Guardians 2 absolutely than in Infinity War not only that but like you have a a literal handful of MacGuffins all swirling around each other in that movie yep. whereas in Black Panther it's like it's not the vibranium that matters 
it's not even that magical flower that like brings people back to life or, mm. or whatever like yeah. that you talk to your like a deceased family yeah, yeah, yeah. it's more of just like how do I deal with the fact that the bad guy has some has a right to feel the way he does because my dad did bad things did bad things to him yeah. so I understand that yet I have to be like a figure yeah. of like peace yet I know that I'm mm-hmm. institutionalized put in this position of advantage power. I will say like should I am I really in the good I position say, to like tell him he's wrong you understand you understand uh, T'Challa 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 yeah you understand his character arc very well mm. at first he's very much like we're isolationist we're gonna stick to our world yeah. but he sees but after he meets Killmonger and hears Killmonger's arguments he doesn't necessarily agree with what Killmonger wants to do but he sees yeah the world is in a pretty bad condition. My eyes are open. My eyes are open to the problems outside of my lands yes. now. Yes. We and need to start the making ending, things better. The ending character is, I know I had this isolationist viewpoint, but we can't always have that viewpoint. We have we have the resources to help the world, so we need to do that. And I think that character growth is the reason why it's a better movie than Infinity anyway. War. Agree. Okay. I think, that's why I said judging them alone, Black Panther would be okay. better. Um, Avengers Age of Ultron and Ant-Man and the Wasp. I have not seen Ant-Man and the Wasp. I can so tell you it's better than Ultron. I would probably agree that it's better than Age of Ultron. I do not like Age of Ultron. It does everything Ant-Man does except introduce one bad character. But aside from that, it does everything Ant-Man does and and actually pushes some really cool things too. The but only character's motive I understand... It makes one slip and that's In Age it. of Ultron, the only character motive that I understand in the character development in that movie is yeah. Tony Stark's. Yeah. And that that's movie because, makes no sense. And with... that's because Tony just watched what happened in the last Avengers and he goes, if I can create an AI program that would yeah. mitigate this from ever happening mm. again, it would probably be better for the world. What? But he never expected that AI program to become sentient and yeah. realize humanity is what needs to be eliminated. Age of Ultron is literally a movie of people running around for an hour and a half, maybe two hours. And I was really, for the first time, disappointed when I walked out of a Marvel movie for the first time in that one, I was like, "Yeah, what the happened? Was that good?" And I think the introduction of good? Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver were very waste poor. of time. We're very poor. I hate the way how she uses her magic powers. Like yeah, it's, that looks so dumb. Poor. Also, because I, I you would have probably grant the Ant Man and the Wasp is, is the better movie. If you have a witch and you have Doctor Strange, who's like a wizard, shouldn't they kind of use magic in the same way? Kind of yeah. like why does her thing look like this and and. Dr. I think Strange hers is like, is like psychokinesis, where his is like I don't, I don't, I don't know. I yeah, can't get. They shouldn't have the introduced them until they got the rights for mutants, and then they could yeah. have just said, "Hey, we're X Men." They're yeah. like, "Whoa, what are X Men?" And yeah. then that's like a you'd be like mutant genetics. Holy genes shit! The next adventure is going to be amazing because then they get X Men in there too. Mm-hmm. But yeah. because of this, it feels neutered. Yeah, but they had a timeline. They didn't know yeah. whether or not they were going to. And I don't yeah, really so. feel like you need Vision as a character. I don't get him at all, aside from just having the Power Stone. Like I feel like it was just pushed. Vision seems like. Vision seems like something that they created as a like counter AI program, but it it makes me question. I like Jarvis better than Vision. Is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Oh, it makes me question why why it worked the first time. Why why Ultron became an AI program that decided that destroying the world was the best thing yeah and why Vision suddenly became an AI that decided that saving everything was the best thing it seems like if they were created through basically the same methods mm. you would almost expect them to come out with the same outcome yeah because they're I, both exposed to the same amount of information yeah. it's weird it's yeah. a bizarre movie uh, that's why I also I, don't like the fact that Ultron's basically a robotic Tony Stark like I understand yeah. they're trying to make it a father son thing but like yeah. we have enough Tony Starks yeah Please be something different. Now, I will say the introduction of Ultron with the in the trailer was pretty awesome. Mm. I think I think re, I think reimagining the uh, what I don't know the name of the song, but you know the Pinocchio. Song. Yeah, yeah. I have no strings to hold me down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think reimagining that and that like horrifying I get it. way I get was it. pretty interesting. I get it. I get but, it. But but we're not judging based on trailers. What do we got next? Thor and Iron Man 3. I thought we already did this. Uh, no, we did Iron Man 2 in, I- in Thor. Hmm. So now we have Thor and Iron Man 3, which hmm. I think Thor is now the better movie than Iron Man 3. I, um, I would actually say Iron Man 3 is the better movie than oh. Thor. Only because... Character development? You, you literally get to see Iron Man out of his suit. Now you no, he's no longer powerful Iron Man. I he's, will agree, actually. He, 
Yeah. Did you see that Tony Stark is more than just Tony Stark in the suit? He's, he's dropped off in a cornfield in Ohio, like, and it's like, what can he do? He's willing to sacrifice his life. Yeah. In knowing that he doesn't have and a suit. And he's breaking into buildings, and he's, like, trying to save Pepper Potts. And, and he's like... like yeah. And uh, even though you have the Mandarin as, like, the joke, yeah. it's better than the main tinfoil hat shovelhead dude yeah. from Thor. Agreed. I think Iron Man Agreed. 3 is a better movie. Better character villain, better villain, better main actor. I'd rather watch any 15 minutes of Iron Man 3 with Tony Stark talking than any 15 minute segment with Thor talking to Natalie Agreed. Portman. Agreed. Agreed. Also, Pepper Potts, Tony Stark is the only relationship I actually really care about. Okay, so now we have Iron Man 2 and Iron Man 3. Do you have an opinion on this one? Iron Man 2, Iron Man 3. Just <sighs> now, there's like the last couple months in oh, man. So there's there's arguments for each. Um I think Iron Man 2 Let's see. I uh, here here's my thing. I I thought what they did in Iron Man 3 was a bigger risk than what they did in Iron Man 2. Iron Man 2, they introduced War Machine, and I think like that was the coolest thing that they were able to do. Iron Man 3 was like, we're going to take away all the suits and just literally have Tony, Robert Downey Jr. act because we have Robert Downey Jr. I like Iron Man 3 better, and then the argument I'll make is that the same argument we made over Thor is that you do get to see that Tony Stark is more than just the suit. Yes. Tony Stark is Iron Man. Holds to his foundational beliefs even when he is most vulnerable. Right. And you see this again in Infinity War. Right. When his suit start, when that nanotech suit that he has starts breaking right. and crumbling, he is still fighting yeah. Thanos knowing damn well that he yeah. could be murdered. It's right not only that, but it's like Tony Stark is a brilliant man. He is Iron Man. Mm-hmm. Like you could put on a suit, but that doesn't make you Iron Man. Like he's Iron Man he's even Iron without Man. a suit. Yeah. He's the one figuring out all these things. And in the entire movie of Iron Man 3 is him dealing with like this modular suit he's been playing around with mm-hmm. so like there's times where he only has the glove or times where he only mm-hmm. has like a shoe or I only has like a helmet but it doesn't even work like he makes mistakes mm-hmm. and it's fun to see like even with the pieces he has like he has to scramble together he's still solving his problems the best he can what we got next so Iron Man uh, 3 better than Iron Man 2 correct you just gave it to Iron Man 2 no I didn't you just clicked Iron Man 2 no Iron Man 2 was on the left oh okay, okay I promise okay. alright alright I, I looked at it several sorry, times sorry sorry you're right Doctor Strange and the Incredible Hulk I'm going to actually probably give this one to Doctor Strange oh what's wrong oh really uh here's what I'll here's the argument I'm alright alright really okay Doctor Strange that's fine I think has a maybe better story arc he or has Stephen Strange. Okay, here's my here's my argument. There's no art. There's no art in Doctor Strange. He is an asshole at the beginning. No, no, no. You're looking at the wrong an character arc. Magic powers. You're looking at the wrong character arc. Talk to me. His character is someone who is very definitive, held down in science, will not adhere to any other belief that he cannot tangibly hold that can be tested. So that way, when he's actually introduced to this, like, magical plane of existence, he doesn't believe it for one bit. Right. And then through experience, he becomes he becomes someone that is, that not only at first didn't believe that this was all important or even existed, to someone who believes that this is actually something important and worth, like, his life to try to protect. But I, I will agree to you that he is still the arrogant character from start to finish. Can I give you the character arc for um, Incredible Hulk? This is a while back ago. Yeah, this is a long time ago for this movie. So I, Edward Norton is basically a guy who's sequestered himself far, far away from people because he sees himself as a danger to humanity and realizes that he can't even kill himself because as Ruffalo would refer to a uh, reference is like he would put a bullet in his mouth uh, he would shoot himself and then wake up with a bullet in his mouth and like in a destroyed building because the Hulk took over so yeah. he's like he's he's trying to do his best to like try to not hurt people whatsoever because he can't control himself mm-hmm. he's been trying to meditate and try to like stay away from people as much as possible mm-hmm. but through the end of the movie he becomes a completely different person who's not only gained control of his ability to do it, like he finally gains control of his ability mm-hmm. to do it, but he no longer sees himself as just a menace. 
he sees the potential in him to be able to do good for people. Mm-hmm. And it's with both of his personalities which he finally came to terms with. It's like he understands that there's a duality to him. It's not just a detriment. He can actually utilize, I think like, he, work with both people yeah, to come better. I think that's actually a better character arc. No, I'll, I'll agree. That's better character arc. My only issue with Doctor Strange is there's, like, two things they could have done to make that movie really, really good for me. And that was give Doctor Strange some sort of vulnerability. They didn't do that. They, he is very much still the rich brain surgeon, accomplished man for, for the entire movie. He's always in a sense like how do I put it haughty and correct in most of the things he does and so talented that he literally can become the chosen master of all the yeah. Asian magicians yeah. even though the he literally just rolled in for years, yeah. yeah he rolled in like two weeks ago and <laughs> he is very much by the time he grows facial hair he's, he's very much a uh, uh, he's a powerful character just to be powerful right I know this isn't anything with the movie, but it would have been cool if they did two things. One, um, have it such that he can't use his hands. Like he was in an he was in an accident. Here's my here's my Doctor Strange right real mm-hmm. quick. He was in an accident. He can't and when he wakes up, he can't use his hands. His hands are fine. They don't look broken, but there's like something in his mind, like so some psychosomatic little hiccup that he does that he can't like pick up things. He can't like hold a scalpel anymore. And he's like, what the hell is wrong with my hands? His Asian co-worker says listen i got a friend if you're into like homeopathic stuff she can help you it's like i'm not into homeopathic stuff i'm into science i'm not going to do that but after a while he's like fine i'm so desperate tell me mm-hmm. where she's at well she's not here you have to go to tibet to find yeah. it's like fuck okay fine i'll go to tibet so he goes to Tibet. then the whole movie happens but here's the thing it's not so much that he learns magical powers and like does everything perfect mm-hmm. it's mostly like he he messes up gets the cape and it's the cape that's like basically like it's like the tuxedo in Jackie Chan. It's just like me and my smarts plus the cape and its ability to like help me out a little bit mm-hmm. are like two things that make me a really interesting like magician that's able to look at things differently than the other magicians around here. And then have the black magician friend mm-hmm. who's actually the bad guy in like future Doctor Strange comic books. Mm-hmm. Have him be like he was slowly corrupting everybody anyway, so everyone kind of sucks. And mm-hmm. the main Scottish bald headed woman realizes yeah. I can't save my people anymore if they've been corrupted from the inside out. I don't know who it is. You're a new face. It's Listen. Incredible hope. Here's this cape. I want you to use I want you to use it. It'll help you. It's like how's the cape gonna help me? And then finally he's like able to like only use his hands for like magic, but not for like tangible things. So mm-hmm. he has like a vulnerable vulnerability. Plus he's got like the cape thing, so it's like this weird like little facet to his identity. Yeah. It's not just all him. And then through two week training program, he's the best wizard yeah. on the planet. The, I, I agree. There are his, things you can do to make it more interesting. His character ramped to power is yeah. way too fast, and it doesn't. It doesn't. I think he would answer. It's and, my same issue, probably that I would say that I have with Ray and Star Wars. It's they're just powerful for the gotcha. sake of being powerful, with no explanation of how they got that power. Right. It's just there. Literally, put Doctor Strange after he kills Dormammu. Back at the first scene of the same movie, and he would still be on his iPhone, still be on his yeah. iPad, getting in a car accident. He yeah. wouldn't have learned anything. So the Incredible Hulk is. I actually think character. there's a better arc there yeah. for Captain. It's surprisingly a great Ed Norton movie, just a bad Hulk movie. But um, it's one of the best Hulk movies in the fact that we had two. We had one bad Hulk movie before him. That was actually yeah. the best Hulk movie. That was movie. probably the best. Movie. Uh, now we have the Incredible Hulk in Captain America Civil War. Civil and... War, you know it. Okay. I was... I just... That is your phone. Oh, that's my... me? I've... Yeah, I've turned off my vibrate. My mouth. Alright. Who's talking to me? Oh, uh, cool. Now we have Civil War and Iron Man, and I... I signed on Civil War. I still say Civil War. Yeah. There's some great arcs in Civil War. Uh, There's some great stakes in Civil War, too. My thing is... My thing is... All three of the main characters in Civil War, Tony, uh, Tony, Bucky, and Steve, they all, they all really like. When so the, one of the greatest scenes in that movie is when we finally get the reveal of the whole thing with like, yeah, why yes. this guy's doing all yes. this. Yes. So we get to this. They're in the that military station or whatever. So be it. Yeah. And then the video starts playing. Yeah. And then Steve can start telling what's going on in the video. He can start seeing, because he like, knows, he's like, that's oh, Bucky's bike. Oh, crap. And then he's like, no, 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 turn this off. 
It's like, no, no, don't watch this. You don't want to see this. This is not going to help whatever situation we're in right now. Right. And then Tony's like, no, I want to see this. Because they finally trusted each other yeah. after everything. And, and then like... finally, like, it wasn't even... It wasn't even the fact that you have to understand Tony grew up being like what his father saw as a failure and it was only his mom that really held him down. So when he, it wasn't the fact that his dad died, he doesn't, he doesn't say, oh, my dad died no. or, oh, you killed my parents. Mm. He specifically you says, killed my mom. you killed my mom. F you. Yeah. I'm going to kill you. And he's like, like, it was the first thing you see Tony Stark at his lowest. Yeah. You see like, he's like. And not only that, but like literally when he loses the fight against Bucky and Steve, he's like. That shield doesn't even belong to you. Like, he's literally limp on the floor, yeah. out of power, can't fight back, and he's just doing whatever he can to just stick it to Steve Rogers. And when he slams that shield into that pavement, you're like, Steve is done, and Tony is done. And it's like, wow. And then, like, the line where Steve's, where Steve's like, don't do this, he's my friend. And he's like, I thought we were friends. Yeah. Because even though they have cohesion, like, yeah. they have, like, a, an abrasiveness against each other and ideology sometimes, is... He sees him as your, your and not only that, but they friend. started in the same. Civil War starts in this with both of them in the same room mm-hmm. talking to each other and ends on that note. Yep. That is a huge arc. That is a huge change. And you're like, even if that was the final movie, that's that was the and, last time we saw those two. That's a huge thing. Not only that arc by itself, you also have to apply the other arc of. You have the other arc of everything that's going on with government wise. Sure. And you can, see, and you understand Tony's arguments for it, mm. and you understand Cap's arguments for it from because you can understand through their perspectives why they would both believe. Yeah, Tony thinks that power Two guys is something both that to should a breaking be. Point. Tony thinks that power is something that should be reined in, controlled, and he knows that the the Avengers have so much power. Right. And without any kind of control, they can do really detrimental things to people that can cause the world to be in a worse state. Yeah, he's seen and, what weapons can do. Yeah, and then, but. So he thinks the government can help bring this in if we work with them. Hmm. Cap, on the other hand, understands government can, like I stated earlier when we were talking about Winter Soldier, yeah. he, he's been betrayed by the government. I think we locked it in. Yeah, yeah, we did. What's next? Uh, Winter Soldier and Spider-Man Homecoming. Okay, so I, it's up to you. What do you think? I, um, <sighs> Spider-Man... I don't understand Spider-Man's character arc in Homecoming. I'm sorry. Really? Um, Spider-Man's character arc is basically he keeps getting fortunate things from Tony Stark and fortunate things from Avengers. But it's not until that all those things are taken away from him that he realizes what who is actually Spider-Man. And it's Peter Parker. And it's when he's covered in all those giant center blocks in his little hoodie outfit Mm -hmm. because he was still trying to get the bad guy that he's like come on Spider-Man come on Peter come on Spider-Man like you are Spider-Man and when he finally gets out of that that is a character that's like man I got this power suit I feel like his character arc is the same as Tony's his character arc is I'm talk to me well maybe not exactly the same as Tony's sure 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 but definitely Iron Man 3 Tony yeah where you finally where he finally learns it is not the suit that makes the man. It is yes. the man that makes the suit. Yes. And what is it? Winter Soldier, I feel like, never got to that low depth. I think the lowest depth in Winter Soldier is when Samuel L. Jackson, Samuel L. Jackson died, but he didn't actually die. I think maybe the lowest point is in in Civil War is probably where Cap feels like he has absolutely no one that he can rely on. He's even questioning of Skojo. Sure. Because... He's just like, I have absolutely no clue who I can trust. I get it, but that's nowhere as low as Peter Parker. Oh, that's nowhere think. as low as my life is right now on the line unless I somehow figure out that I am... And I have no one to help me because I'm literally under mountains of rubble. Yeah, because... And I love how the villain is in Homecoming where it's like, I'm going to kill anyone who crosses me. The villain is very much more understandable in Homecoming than in Winter Soldier. Yes. Because the the, the villain villain in Winter Soldier is technically like the government and government power and and subterfuge. Yeah. Where the villain in Homecoming is like... I'm never just just trying to do my job. He's just a guy that wants to provide for his family. Basically, yeah. I think it's the better movie of the Uh, two. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Uh, Spider-Man Homecoming and (laughs) Ant-Man. They basically... (laughs) <laughs> they kind of had the same kind of arcs. I will agree that Spider-Man has a better At villain. At least the same. Than Ant-Man? Yeah. I think the villain arc in Ant-Man, or the villain arc in Homecoming is actually who Scott Lang is. 
What? He's like, I do. <laughs> You're right. He's like, I do illegal stuff to help my daughter. I do illegal stuff to help my daughter. Sure. But they're just two different characters and different. Right. <laughs> Here, here's the weird thing about Spider Man. Ant Man. Here's the group. Here's the brilliant thing about Ant Man. There are very, very low stakes in that movie. Like that is just a businessman trying to do a business. Mm -hmm. An evil businessman is trying to come up with an evil business idea. Wait, you think the stakes in Spider-Man are really large? Well, only. Hmm, what's the main? Like, I feel like in Spider-Man, wasn't there like this giant ship that was flying, and he was like that could teleport and like turn like invisible and all that stuff, and like you that, had they just had alien tech. I, think. I mean, I will say this about Spider-Man that I think Ant-Man does better. Any. 10 minutes any random 10 minutes of Ant-Man is good it's really fun to watch oh. you might get a random listen you might get there a are, there, uh, you, I'll, I'll, I'll grant you there are parts at homecoming you're like this is they're sitting in high school and there's yeah. like oh does Peter Parker have a crush on this girl oh that's yeah, cool are they sitting in detention just staring at each other okay we're waiting are they literally in a bus doing math problems and yeah. I'm not watching this sequence play out I think that whole thing was to set up Peter as a character I get it but like but yeah. this is boring I agree Ant-Man is like it's a it is it's primarily an Edgar Wright through. it's an Edgar Wright movie from nearly beginning to end it feels like it which means it's just constantly yeah. high paced and everything is necessary and there's there's this that Julio Pena thing where he's just like okay guys so check it out so I was at the park and my friend was like hey man you heard yeah. the latest episode yeah. of so the Sopranos and the, everyone's like having so much fun in that yeah. movie there's everyone's having so much fun in that movie that I can't help but have fun when I, I watch will, it I will grant Ant-Man is better than Spider-Man Homecoming and if you literally ask me which movie would I I know this isn't the question but if you ask me which movie I'd watch right now I'd be like Ant-Man that's like a fun enclosed but who has jam the best, I, do you think they both have really good character developments I I I think you think the pacing of Ant-Man is better? I think the pacing of Ant-Man is better. I think the direction of Ant-Man is I would say better. the character development is both on level. Yeah. The villains are both on level. Yeah. But the pacing of Ant-Man is better than Homecoming. I think Ant-Man has literally, like, because of its focus, rises to one main climax and drops down. Whereas Spider-Man is like, okay, so then he has to tie that it ship together. It has skills and balance. Then there's that Washington Monument thing. Okay, then he fights the the vulture again. Then he's in the spaceship thing again? Like, when does this end? Like, there's a lot of yeah. steps. I agree. That I don't really feel where the main climax the pacing, hits. The pacing is Ant-Man is like, boom, boom, boom. And you... You can lock yourself into like a real fun ride for that. I feel like it's just a better constructed film yeah. compared to Spider Man. There, are, yeah. It is the best Spider Man movie, but I just feel like Ant Man's the better. Oh film. yeah, they did Spider Man absolutely right in October. Absolutely right. Yeah. Brilliantly casted. I just feel like there's way better chemistry going on in Ant Man. Everyone's having and more fun. From now on, I would probably say Tom Holland is probably best Spider. Man. Ten thousand percent. I can't wait for the next Spider Man movie. I think the poster in Ant Man's better than the atrocity of the Spider Man Homecoming movie. It is a terrible, crazy psychedelic poster yeah. that doesn't reflect the tone of the movie at all. No. Whereas Ant Man. I remember the original Ant-Man poster. It was literally all white with a little speck in the center. And you're like, what's going on here? And if you look in it, it's that yeah. with Ant-Man at the bottom. I'm like, what? I'm yeah. not going to enjoy this movie. And I turned out it was an yeah, amazing it was movie. A, okay, so Ant-Man. Ooh, Ant-Man and Guardians. You can give it to Guardians. I I honestly think... You give it to Guardians. I think, honestly, Guardians is, is... Better soundtrack, better character growth. Better soundtrack, better character growth. Better villains. Oh. Better villain. Better villain than in one in Ant Man. Yeah, yeah, better villain than Ant Man. Yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't say the villain in Guardians is a good villain. No. Cause he's he's basically Thanos light. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like And we don't even understand his motivations. You understand his motivations. His his race he's basically killmonger but blue. Good, good yeah, point. Right? He just wants power. No, he power wants for power. He sake. wants a revenge against the not the Kree but the other race, oh, the Skrill. Yeah, yeah, the Skrill. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he wants his people to rise higher, basically. Yeah. Um, I would say Ant Man's villain is basically just an asshole businessman. Um, I would say the character, the character interaction, yeah. is better in Guardians. Yes. And most of that is because some of the lines that are written as comedy yeah. are perfectly developed. And even yeah. even as simple lines as Groot just going, sure. Groot, sure. I am Groot, sure. you understand the context of what he's saying at that point. Guardians of the Galaxy did what Up did in that first seven minutes 
what Garden Galaxy, Garden Galaxy did that in like the first two minutes where you see the mother die from cancer, the kid run away, and you're just like, no words, and you're just like, oh, I'm locked into this character. He's, yep. I'm already sold. Yeah. I'm already sold in this I'll movie go, being I'll awesome. Oh, good Guardians. Uh, okay. Well, I don't think there's a competition here, but if you want to make an argument. What, is, what are the options? Uh, Captain America, the first Avenger, and Thor, the Dark World. Okay, Captain America, the first Avenger is the better movie. I, I, yes. Yeah. Okay. I I've already stated my opinion. Okay. Thor: Dark World. You will, you will have to if we ever get to an argument that you want to throw Thor: The Dark World over something you're gonna to have to convince me hard because I think that movie is agreed. Very like I think on my list that I finally sent you like my sure. finally like Thor: sure. The Dark World is sure sure sure. I would say fun. like Fantastic Four stick is probably the oh, only worst. Oh yeah, four, movie. Man, four stick is probably the only worst. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thor Ragnarok and Captain America the First Avenger. Thor Ragnarok. I agree. Okay. I agree. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the Avengers and Thor Ragnarok. This is actually good. This one's difficult. I'm... <sighs> okay, so I like... Alright, I'm gonna listen to whatever you I'm got. just going to judge the characters, because Thor, Thor Ragnarok only has Thor in uh, Hulk. No. Loki. Thor Ragnarok. Well, Thor it... Hulk Loki. No! Thor Ragnarok is basically an Avengers onto itself. It has Hela, who's awesome, played brilliantly. Yeah. It has Bruce Banner and Thor. It has Valkyrie. It has Thor. It has Jeff freaking Goldblum. Yeah, it has all in the same movie. Yeah. In the same movie? Yeah. How is this movie this yeah. crazy? And it works. It's Which an amazing Which one has a better movie. villain? Who's a better villain? Hela so or isn't, Loki? So when I think about it, both Jeff Goldblum and Hela are the villains. Oh, was Jeff Goldblum a villain? I thought he was he just totally an opportunist. Is. Well, I mean, he's he is both a slave master and the machination of why Thor and Loki and and Hulk are all trapped on that planet, while in a completely separate area, Hela's taking over in another place. So it's like you have two villains in completely different areas. Uh, Jeff both, Goldblum's right, character is a villain just because he is he is the one thing standing between Thor getting home and trying to stop he's what the his initial antagonist and yeah. they're and it's and I would say he's an antagonist with so much charisma that you like I like this guy yeah. but like Hela in his own, in her own right is completely justified in everything that she does uh, to the point where you she could, fought with her father to keep that world she she deserves she she is at out of out of all things she is the better warrior yes and in that society, she is true heir to the throne. Yes, she is. And a lot of people just didn't respect that. But, like, she's yeah. like, I did everything to get us to where we are mm -hmm. right now. I got stabbed in the back by her dad, mm -hmm. who was also an asshole, by the way. Mm. And I don't have anything with you if you just bow, bow to me right now. And Thor's like, I'm not going to bow to you. It's like, you don't even know what you're supporting. Yeah. Fine, I'll kick your ass right here. And he's like, I shouldn't have kicked your ass. Yeah. You destroyed my hammer. Holy yeah. crap. I'm now in this prison planet. Like, there's some... I would say like and I think the it, ride is funner in Thor Ragnarok than it is in Avengers. I think I think Thor Ragnarok is the better movie. Okay. Um, and I also think better soundtrack than uh, Avengers. Hela is a better villain than Red Hood. Not yes. Red Hood. Red Red Mask. What what is evil Nazi Hitler dude? Oh, Red. Skull. Red Skull. Yeah. There we go. Also, Loki's in this movie, and oh he, no, wait, wait, no, this is Avengers. Thor. I wouldn't say Loki's a villain, but he's very oh. much like. On these team of two villains, two good guys. I forgot like, this was Loki. Opportunistic, bouncing back and forth. Uh, this movie, Look, this movie is main villain is Loki. Yeah, who's great? I, I forgot about. I forgot which movie we're joking. But for every reason, Loki's great in the Avengers. He's in Thor Ragnarok, doing even more. The best part of the Avengers is all the way up. Uh, the best parts of the Avengers are everything before the attack on New York. From the attack on New, from the moment the attack on New York happens. The pacing goes really awry. No, that's the well. It's the climax of the movie. It's the climax. Sure, I understand. But it's a good climax as well. It is a good climax, but what happens is you have a lot of characters that are all over the place, and it is flashing. Let me just crush this argument for like slam dunk why Thor Ragnarok is better. You literally start with Thor. Uh, I already think Thor's better though. No, but you literally think Thor straight out. You get the Thor straight out of Thor Ragnarok too, Dark World. Yeah. And you end up with Odin's son. Uh huh. Eye patch. No hammer, short hair, like face paint. Lightning powers. Lightning powers strickling all over his body yeah. and kicking ass. And you're like, I've seen this entire arc He learns arc that of I do character. not need the hammer. I am Thor. He learns that I'm tired losing people and being weighed down by my shitty past that I didn't even really understand myself. I'm going to be myself. So, so in this, 
Okay. I'm I'll, going I'll, to be me, not the hammer this dude. Is why I I'm will going argue to be me. Thor is Thor Ragnarok shows a good Thor. Thor, from this mo- up until this moment, is very, I am Thor with my hammer. Right. He thinks that Thor without hammer is not Thor. He right. thought this in the first movie. That's why when he lost his hammer, he went. He had to go earn it back. And he thinks that's who I am. Mm. I'm Thor. I need my hammer. Hella crushes like obliterates easily. The thing. And that blew his mind. And he's like, like I didn't uh, know that was that's possible. one of the most powerful weapons in the world. I don't understand. Yeah. And then from that moment on, he's very much being like, how do I be Thor without my hammer? Exactly. I can't be Thor without my hammer. Right. Like, you even see him be like... Yeah, and the whole time oh. is like, you're not Thor. You're Odin's son. Yeah. And then he, finally you. he goes... Finally he realizes, I I am the son of Odin. I am the, I am the god of lightning. I have power outside of my hammer. And when he finally realizes that, he becomes more than just Thor. But there's also really good character moments where it's like, his relationship with Loki has always been on the rocks. Like, mm-hmm. Loki, you killed a lot of people. Loki, you've always caused trouble. You've yeah, said me about a thousand, people. thousand times. Yeah. But listen, I know that's what you're always going to do. I'm just letting you know I love you because yeah. I've always thought of you as my brother. Mm-hmm. And I know you're going to be keeping you... But know that I'm going to keep being me, and that person is the person who loves you. And I'm like, that elevator scene, mm-hmm. when he like puts the tracer or the, the on zapper back. on his back, because he knew he, he was going to betray him again. And Loki's like, well, maybe I won't betray you. But like, L- Thor knows him better than that. Yeah. It's like, the first time you have smart Thor, yeah. and then funny Thor. And yep. I'll say this one last time. Avengers was the first to s- establish the comedic tone with the Joss Whedon style. Thor, Thor capitalized on it the best. And Thor Rock doesn't capitalize it. it. It evolves it for the first time. I yeah. I think it. I think Taika Waititi is a Thor funny Ragnarok guy. Thor Rock uses comedy the best. Yes. There might be some comedic moments that fall apart, like when he's in uh, what's his face is lair and he's spinning around in the chain. That was hilarious. It was funny, but that was funny. He's like, yeah. oh, what are we doing? How, funny to see you here. He's talking like a skull. Yeah. And he's like doing the whole summary of the movies. And then when they go back and there's a play of the other two movies, that's stupid and hilarious too. It's very Ferris Bueller. Like, I bet you're wondering how I got you. Yeah, but consider where <laughs> Thor was. Yeah. Two terrible movies. And yeah. then suddenly, like, yeah. just get rid of all of that. But start uh, off with our base. Avengers story. Age of Ultron and Infinity War. We'll start with villains. Because I think I can Thor, judge. Thanos is the better villain. Thanos is the better villain. Thanos is... They are both movies that don't go anywhere. So, if you want to give it to uh, Infinity they War... Are, they are both movies that don't go anywhere. If you want to give it to Infinity War, you can give it to Infinity War. They are literally both movies that don't have an arc for anybody. Yeah. Like, no, not there's really. not really an arc for anyone in that movie. I think Hawkeye gets a farm. I think, I think the only person who really has any kind of... Uh, I think Thanos, because of his realization or efforts to finally fulfill the thing that he's been trying to do, it's not even really an arc that Thanos had. It's just, I'm a guy that's trying to do something. I know it's going to be hard. I'm the only person that's strong enough to do this thing that I'm trying to do, and then he ends up doing it. I think that's what Ultron feels like, but I don't think Ultron feels like he's actually losing anything by doing that. Mm. See, Ultron has that very... Is that very? I want to eliminate everything for the greater good as well. Yeah. But he doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't understand that there's an actual loss to that. Yes. Thanos. Oh. Thanos understands oh. that. Even yeah. though Thanos is like, I, Thanos is like, this is something I don't want to do, but it's something that I understand it has to be done. He he, he states this when he's talking about how he tried to make the decision on his homework. Sure. He said, I saw what was going to happen. Sure. I didn't want to do it, but yes. it was something that had to be done. Higher highs, lower lows, Infinity Warriors, get it. Infinity War and Ant-Man and the Wasp, you'll have to... Uh, you'll have to... I, I, haven't seen I don't want to spoil Lost. the movie for you. You don't spoil it? Just... Imagine it. Imagine if it said Ant-Man, but instead of just it being Ant-Man, it now has a much better villain that's actually super fleshed out. <laughs> they gave it to Ant-Man and Wasp. Ant-Man and Wasp is Ant-Man, but with a much better villain. At, the, that's the what downside. The, only issue, the downside to all of Ant Man was the villain. The only issue with Ant Man and the Wasp that I wouldn't rank, rank, rank it higher than Ant Man, and I know we aren't there yet, is they make 
two mistakes, and I don't want to spoil it, but they do. One of the mistakes is they kind of dumb down uh, Scott Lang oh. for the com- for com- oh, yeah. comedy, yeah. but not like dumb. It's just okay. he's become more of a bumbling guy because oh, no. in the context of the he's movie, Paul Rudd. well, <laughs> in the context oh, no. of the movie, he spent two years in house arrest while everyone else was doing everything after oh. Civil War. So he's kind of like out of his element yeah. a little bit. And then the second thing is there's like a really bad MacGuffin that's introduced very late in the game, and I don't think it needed that. But it's setting up for more stuff, so I didn't think they needed that. All right, right. so Ant-Man and the Wasp and Black Panther. Um, Ant-Man and the Wasp, it's a better... I was about to say, I think Ant-Man is better than Black Panther, so if you think Ant-Man and the Wasp is on par with Ant-Man... I don't know where you stand on Black Panther, but I don't really rank it very high. I think Uh, Civil War is a better Black Panther movie than Black Panther itself. I think the I arc. Was, I was mad because Black Panther in Civil War is a better Black Panther. It is, it's and he's downgraded in the and he's second movie. In his actual own movie. He literally has one emotion in the Black Panther movie, whereas in in Civil War he's like, "My father's dead." No, and he's like, "I'm gonna I'm gonna find the guy who killed my dad," this and he finds kills. This is this is okay. So if you want to talk about, well, I guess we can get there when we're judging the two sure. movies if we ever judge them. Okay, each okay. Other. But in in Civil War, this may take a while. <laughs> in Civil War, <laughs> this probably will take the rest yeah, of the time. Yeah, let's take it till at least um, eight ten, right? So we got like another hour. Okay. All right. Ant Man, easily. All right. Uh, Black Panther, Civil War. Sure. Black Panther, Civil War has a character arc that is my father died. Yes. I'm irrationally thinking that I just want revenge. I just want to kill the guy who... I'm literally teaming up with these who, guys, not because I like them, because I, I want to kill my and dad. And I don't care who that is, or and I don't care if I have dad. proper evidence for who it is. I'm going to take it out on the first person I find. Yes. And then he, he he tries, he's struggling that the entire time. Yeah. And finally, when he finds the truth out of who caused all this... When he has him in front of him. He says, you're not going to die. You don't, you don't get off that easily. Exactly. I actually have other plans for you. Not only, not not in the sense of I'm going to hurt you more, no, but in but I am finally I have finally learned from true. everybody yeah. else who've been punching and kicking each other so that's that the revenge is not the yeah. path. I am better than all these assholes who call themselves. Reven- he's yeah, just watch what revenge does. He's Blind saying revenge causes he's, you to kill people. Literally, he's like learning from all apart. these dumb people. It's like I'm not going to be one of those people. Yeah. I'm we're doing it different. Mm-hmm. Even though you killed my dad, death is too good for you. And I'm now I've realized that revenge isn't the answer. Like that is a brilliant arc. For an origin story, plus all that extra... Civil War is an amazing movie. Yeah. But when you watch the Black Panther movie, you get none of that. that yeah. None of that's in there. So, out of this one, I think Ant-Man and, and, and the Wasp is actually really fun. Movie. Doctor Strange and Thor. Doctor Strange. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I agreed on that one. If we, okay. all, if we have disagreements, that's the only time we'll have to actually have Iron Man 3 or Doctor... I say Iron, Iron Man, Man 2. 3. This oh. is Iron Man 2. Oh, Iron Man 2. Whippy Man versus Doctor Strange. I, I rank these movies equally. What do you think? I'm going to go with Iron Man 2 because it's a very less world at stake movie. It's very just... It's a very protagonist-antagonist sure. where Doctor Strange's movie is like this 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 universe world eater yeah. is coming to our universe to destroy it all. You know what I really don't like about Doctor Strange is he's an annoying asshole at the beginning of the movie. Annoying, annoying asshole annoying. at the end of the movie. He's, and the way how he beats Dormammu right. is basically locking him in a room and Dormammu's like... You're kind of an annoying asshole. It's like, yeah, we're trapped yeah. here forever. It's like, never mind. No. I don't want to take over the world. Like, you are literally that insufferable <laughs> to be around. I give up. And Doctor Strange is like, okay. And he do- like, does the magic. Boy. And Dormammu honors the bet. He doesn't yeah. just say like, oh, now that I'm freaking, I'll just try to destroy you from a side of planet. It's like, no. You're so bad. I'm, I'm going to leave Earth alone. Yeah. Like, that was the agreement that they came to. It's like, I literally stuck through six cycles. Like, maybe six minutes. Yeah. With you in a room, and I'm like, you win. <laughs> it's so bad. It's such a dumb movie. Such a dumb movie. Plus, let me tell you this. I'll do one more thing for Doctor Strange. I know I've been talking about this, but I'll let him keep the English accent. Oh, yeah. 10,000%. I don't know why they did that, but whatever. They were like, let's give an American accent. I was like, why? Yeah, why? I was like, why? Does, he doesn't have to be American. Like, you're well, doing Spider-Man makes, in London. That just makes Benedict Cumberbatch to have to have an accent. He doesn't have Yeah, to. you know what's so stupid about <laughs> it, too? Because they gave him an English accent, and then they made him master of the London uh, yeah. Hogwarts of Doctor yeah, Strange's yeah. world. I'm like, wait, yeah. if he's going to live in London... Just, just, yeah, just start it in London. Just 
freaking let him speak Why in English. Why does he have to be an American doctor anyways? Yeah, for real. For real. Started in London. Let's make it an international yeah. thing. Why does everyone have to be in New York? Yeah. Like, it makes no sense. He could just be... Yeah, he could teleport. Yeah, I don't know. Let him be in London. I don't, I don't know. He's so much better with an English accent. Hulk and Iron Man 2? Iron Man 2. It's good. Both in... Tony Stark and as Iron Man are both good. It's only good as Bruce Banner. Yeah. For, in true. Hulk. Yeah. The Hulk is not great. They... Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do. And I, I don't remember the villain in this one is just is another evil, military. Dude. No, it's another evil Hulk, basically, sort of thing. Kind of. I thought that was the first Hulk. It's sort of like a guy who does super soldier. It's, it's a oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a military dude that wants to be what's her face's boyfriend. Yeah. Or it's, love it's, interest or whatever. Iron yeah. Man two gets it. Iron Man two. Gets it. Ooh, Iron Man and Iron Man. Iron 2. Man gets it. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Iron Man again. Iron Man again. Yeah. Ooh, Guardians 2 is what I think wins this one. I can see that. Iron Man is very by the script. Guardians does some really risky things. If I were to judge those two movies... The reason I think Guardians 2 gets this is... Oh, Guardians 2 gets it. The reason I think it is is because although Iron Man is my favorite Marvel character, Guardians 2 takes a larger risk. Yes, absolutely. And I think that's what makes it a better movie. Not only that, but like you get more character but moments. But to be fair, Iron Man is the first Marvel that Cinematic means nothing. Universe movie. That, no, it's not. Incredible Hulk is. Bruce Banner's story of how he shot himself in the mouth and he woke up as as Bruce Banner again with a bullet in his mouth, that is from The Incredible Hulk. Yeah. Like, that's why it's, The Incredible Hulk is on this list. It came up before Iron Man. Like, it's not the tone of an MCU movie, but it borrows so did, much did from that. The Incredible Hulk, the actual Incredible Hulk movie? Ruffalo's story Ed, is Ed Norton. No, no, no. Is Ed Norton's movie before to- Tony Stark's yes, movie? Yes, yes. You're going to make me... Well, I mean, we can look that up, but, like, the CGI is a lot worse. That's the only thing I'm basing well, on, to be honest with you. Uh, we'll look that up. Okay, sure, sure, sure. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. But, yeah, Guardians 2. I feel like, um... Ooh. Civil War and Guardians. I'll say this, too. and I'm not sure. It could be the fact that Iron Man came out first, but Incredible Hulk feels like the sort of thing where it's like it maybe wasn't it was owned like a planned MCU movie is what it feels like. Exactly, yeah. it wasn't meant to start a franchise. Yeah. It was just like, hey, we got the rights to this movie. You want to make yeah. a movie? Sure. It was pretty good. We got funding. We want to make an Iron Man movie? Yeah, sure. Yeah. We'll make an Iron Man. Movie. Let's plan this out a little bit. If this movie looks out pretty good, maybe we can make a sequel. Maybe yeah. we can like throw in some other guys. Maybe we can have a world where all these heroes work together. We'll so, see if it works. Can, what's your name, Feige? Yeah, we'll see if it works. Captain America: Civil War or Civil War versus Guardians Two. I Civil War is the better movie. I agree. Okay. <laughs> I think we already explained why. Uh, I, I can probably explain. Oh, uh, Winter Soldier is better than Dark World. I'd... Is that the two options? I can't yeah. see over the microphone. Yeah, it's yeah. Dark World and Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier wins over Dark World. Yeah, yeah, Dark World's bad. Dark World's bad. I can't even name the elf's bad name. What do we got? And they threw Natalie Portman's character doing a bunch of weird stuff in that movie for just Natalie Portman's character to be in that and movie. And then they just dumped her and She Ragnarok. has no reason to be in that she movie. She had no reason to she be in the movie, She found a MacGuffin to no. keep her in that movie. Let me tell you something. Uh, <laughs> Darcy, who was the other girl in the Thor movies, was mm-hmm. a much better character than Natalie Portman, who was just the girlfriend. So, sorry. So, anyway. Winter Soldier in the first Avenger. Winter Soldier? Yeah, I think Winter Soldier. The first Avenger is a very slow movie. It is very slow. If it takes watch- a long time to get to... And then there's this whole, like, scissor reel of oh, events that yeah, happens. Yeah. And I'm like, that well, crazy montage if is you like, have to scissor reel stuff in the middle of your movie, that probably means this was boring. It's bad direction. Let me tell you, the coolest thing about the first 20 minutes of Winter Soldier was the fact that they reduced Chris Evans to a scrawny little guy. They're like, look what we did with our technology. It's like... But for the spectator, it's like, okay, so there's a skinny man on the screen. Yeah. Why is this important? Yeah. The directors are like, we made a strong man look like a skinny guy. Isn't that amazing? But like for us, no. we're like, is he, so was he skinny the whole time? Yeah. Or is he must? I, I don't, I don't understand, understand what's going on. Yeah. Why is why is this interesting? Yep. I'm going with the, I'm going with the Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier is amazing. Avengers versus the Winter Soldier. Ooh. Avengers is the better movie. Avengers is yeah. a sports movie. Winter Soldier is a spy movie. Do you know what I mean by sports yeah, movie? Yep. Yeah. Okay, it, okay. It's very much of like we got to get the team together. We got to get the team together. Oh no, we lost the team's our mascot. Overcome this enemy. Yep. Yep. Samuel Jackson is the, the sports leader. He's it's, the coach. It is a yes. And then when they lose Coulson, it's like 
you lo- the water boy broke his leg. It's like you want to do this for Timmy? No, no, no. No, like he went. I feel like Coulson, he got hit by a car. I feel like Colson's like uh, Colson's like the guy on the team that was like he was always breaking up the fights and trying to yeah, hold the team together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, then he ever, gets in a car accident and, and dies. And then he gets in a car accident or he ends up in the hospital or something. And like all the teams yep. who've been fighting for petty shit are finally like, let's do it for, let's do it for Timmy. Do it for him. Let's do it let's for Let's do Coulson. it for him. Yeah. And then you yeah, can, you can just it. see like let's them walking team. out into the like into a stadium in here and, and like Coulson, the guys who are Coulson. arguing are like, we're doing it for him, yeah. right? Let's put all our stuff yeah. behind and then they do it and you're like, oh, that's why it was so good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the Avengers. I would say that was better than what they did for Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier is like, just like, like okay, okay, they made a Jason yeah. Bourne one, Captain America. Yeah. Not bad. Shaky Cam is off the the hook in that movie, and it's just mm, unnecessary. Yeah. Uh, Avengers and Spider Man Homecoming. I think probably Avengers for some of the reasons we've stated. I think Spider Man, but Spider Man Homecoming has has is, a. Is better for Peter Parker than anyone. Spider Man Homecoming is a coming of age story where somebody learns that they're more than just what they thought they, they were. A hell of a lot and more the Avengers is what you said was just a sports movie. It is. And I think coming of age stories relate more to people. It's also it's also higher highs and lower lows is how I say it. Like the highs for Spider Man is like I'm working with Tony Stark, the billionaire. I'm in high school. But, I'm like the coolest kid ever. But and he I'm Spider Man. And I just but I got this awesome suit from him. Like in that beginning of that movie, yep. he's like, and I fought with Captain America and it was the best thing ever. And I got this tool. And then he suit. realizes that even with the suit, he can't he can't be all and of everything. And he's whittling away, and then Tony comes and just takes it all away from and him. Then and then like, he's just Tony's like, you messed up to me. I remember times. when he goes back to his mom or like Aunt May, and he's just like, uh, I got kicked out of the, um, a, the he was, uh, he was Tony really Stark like, I got kicked out of the program. And I'm like, I feel, it's like, he, yeah. I feel like he like got kicked out yeah. of college. Yes, yeah. Spider-Man Homecoming. And I'm Spider-Man like, Homecoming. it hurts. Yes, yeah, Spider-Man Homecoming. And then he builds that back up yeah. on himself, and then he That's gets... That's why I said it's a coming of age story. But remember when he gets the suit from Tony Stark, like, by the way, kid, you did a good job. Here's your new suit. And he's like, you know what? I think I'm I'm good without it. I just want to be a neighborhood Spider-Man. Yeah, he's like, you passed the test. Good job. I, I'm like, he's like, he's like, wait, that was a test. He's like, uh, yeah, like he's like, I don't need. You. And then he's like, and then he's like, yeah, it was just a test. And then he walks away, and then Pepper comes out, and she's like, so is he gonna come out here and put on the suit or not? And she's, and it's like, wait, so it wasn't a test. That's Tony's huge. just being a father figure, and that's yeah. when you're like, you you finally see Tony as a father figure and it's as great. well. I love Spider-Man that. Yeah, I love I love he's it. a great yeah. father figure. Yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, <laughs> it's a great movie. Really... <laughs> okay, so here's the. Do you, is this where the blows begin? Oh, these are where these are. This is where it starts getting like down to like the yeah. Nitty-gritty. We're at the top of. the I list. told you the top of the list is probably going to be harder. So mm-hmm. I will argue. So my argument is that Thor Ragnarok is the better movie than Spider Man. They both have kind of the same thing. They're, they're both doing the same. They both came it's, after it's, bad movies. They both came after a and bad are the movie, best of their franchise. And they're the best of their franchise. But here's how. And they both go through. Thor with hammer is not Thor. Spider-Man without suit yes. is not Spider-Man. Both of them have to fall into their lows to yes. realize I am more than I but, am. But here's my argument. With Spider-Man, they they got rid of everybody and replaced them all with new people. With yep. Thor, they kept, they everybody kept everybody and they made them awesome. So it's clearly the feat of the director to do yeah. that. Yeah. What I see in Thor Ragnarok is this is what you can do if you hire the right people to do your work. Whereas but Spider-Man like, is this is what we can do if we if we just re, got rid of if everybody we reimagine everything into a better way. Yes, if we literally just get rid of everybody and hire everyone to fit in our narrative, great. Here's a bunch of shit, and here's two <laughs> movies. It. Fix it. Yeah. and he fixed he it. Did. He did to like one of the greatest movies of yeah. all time. And let me see the ensemble cast. You you get scenes where you have Hulk on a bed like bouncing a ball off the wall, uh-huh. and and Thor's talking to him, and you get to learn more about Hulk. It's like people just like me because I'm Hulk. They yeah. don't like me because like of anything that I care about. So I'm like, fine, I'm Hulk. I'm way better. And yeah. he, and Thor's like, uh, sure, yeah, I like you because you're Hulk. It's like no one likes Hulk. Everyone likes Bruce Banner. It's like no, I don't like Bruce Banner. Everyone likes everyone, no one likes a science man like old Brainy Man. Yeah. I like you. You're smart. We get along with yeah. each other. And. And when he switches to Bruce Banner, it's like, everyone hates me because, like, I turn into Hulk. No one likes Bruce Banner. It's like, what are you talking about, man? I love Bruce Banner. I'm sorry. You know, that green guy. No one yeah. likes him. He's, all, he's like, yeah, every, he's there's just... so many cool, clever dynamics that's going on in that movie that you just don't get from Spider-Man. I agree right. with, I agree. Thor Ragnarok is... Also, higher highs, lower yeah. lows. Like, when Thor loses his hammer and is sent in the world, and he's just, like, destitute. Like, he loses his hair... And the only friend he has is Thor, and he's just like, oh, not Thor, but Hulk. And he's just like, he's at his lowest lows at that point, and it's like, oh, Hulk, hey, 
Yep. Blah, and he loses his whole home. Like, mm-hmm. he sees that happen in that movie. Yeah. But he realizes it's his people that matters. So it's like... He loses so much more than Peter Parker did, yeah. yet he still kept a light tone throughout. The, you have your finger over. I should stop talking. I was like, I agreed with. I'm Thor just saying, Ragnarok yeah. A little bit. Ago. Oh no! This one's hard. <laughs> so what we have right now is Ant Man and Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, Ant Man Thor Ragnarok. I'm willing to say Thor Ragnarok's better than Ant Man, only because it's more fun. But, but, yeah, better villains, just more arcs. They they go from beginning to end. Scott Lang's in prison. He's not in prison and he's Ant-Man, sure. But, like, Thor is, like, the god of thunder and he yeah. goes to Odin's son. Okay, so, I feel like even though it seems like Thor Ragnarok has has what would be, like... Because, you, know, you and I both have issues when stakes seem unrealistically sure, too high. Sure, sure, And a lot sure. of people could try to make that argument for Thor. He's about to lose his whole world, whatever. And sure, 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 sure. But, you gotta also remember Thor's a god. Mm. So when you're talking about the stakes for gods, of course the stakes are going to be really high because they're working on a different level of reality, mm. of realistic... But he's a god that loves his people. Yep. So he doesn't know that his people isn't Asgard. His people is the people in Asgard. So he, yeah. when he actually goes to save those people, mm-hmm. that's why he doesn't want Hela to be in charge because she doesn't respect yeah. the people. She only cares about the land. She only cares about being in power. Exactly. Yeah. So, like, he's the only one that cares about the people, and I think that's what's kind of interesting. And then he learns that Asgard isn't just Asgard. It's wherever the people live. It's wherever the people are. Yeah. I, I think Thor Ragnarok is the better movie. <laughs> I'm going to say this about Thor Ragnarok that might actually change my mind a little bit. Oh, no. The first... I know, right? The first 15 minutes of Thor Ragnarok are really hard to follow. They move... Not the one where he's, like, in the dungeon spinning around, though that where was... Where he's kind, talking to his dad? It's where it's, like, where he goes back to Asgard, he sees Loki, mm-hmm. they find Odin, a lot of that stuff was reshot, Hela gets released, mm-hmm. they get sent to the desert planet, like, all... The junk planet, like, that whole set of sequence happened very quickly. Pacing issues. Very big pacing issues. That was the only weak part of that whole movie. Everything after that was great. Mm-hmm. But Ant-Man from beginning to end... Has really good pacing. ...is one of the most best-paced movies. Yep. And, yes, the stakes are small, but, you know, a god cares about his people, but I don't think a god would care about his people any more than a father would care about his daughter. Probably not. And I would, I'd swear that Aunt Scott Lang as Ant-Man would be willing to do anything that Thor would do, maybe even more, for Casey yep. than Thor for his people. And I could actually, I just I just give it to Thor Ragnarok just because of the villain cast yep. and everyone having way more fun with each other. No, everyone has more fun than Ant-Man, to be honest with you. Be perfectly honest. The main bad guy is not threatening whatsoever. The main in, bad guy... In Ant-Man, no. But Hela is legitimately terrifying and beautiful at the same time. Yeah. It's just weird. But she is a threat. True. Horns on her head. And she makes it work. It's just insane. Yeah. Yeah, Thor I, Ragnarok. Yeah. I think Hell is the better villain. I would Ant-Man, give it to... Ant-Man's villain is a, just the a corporate bag. bad guy who wants the technology. Yeah. Which... Yes. But... Sure. You don't believe that he deserves it. Not only that... You believe Hela deserves her position. You just I agree. think that what she's doing with her position is awful. I think also... Even though the pacing issue was a little rough, they had to do something to fix everything in the past, and they had yeah. to explain where the movies were coming yeah. from. I also it would think... be very weird if you jumped into Thor Ragnarok with Odin without explaining why Odin's about to die, why he's right. off, and everything like that. I also think they did a smart move in Thor by getting rid of the love stories. They're oh, just like, yeah. oh yeah, I heard you got broke up. It's like, yeah. Yeah, like Natalie Portman's character is gone. And Done. That's the best. You literally just massively improved. And Thor. they never reintroduce her. And that's done. Best too. So good. Yep. Whereas Ant Man had a bunch of like weird love story things going on. So yeah. Okay. So Thor Ragnarok. Thor Ragnarok, better movie than Ant Man. Thor Ragnarok and Guardians. I thought we already did this no, one. No, we haven't. Guardians. I'll agree. Guardians. Guardians. Better soundtrack. Better. Not better villain though. Not better villain. No. The much villain, better villain. Much better. No villain Jeff Goldblum either. Yeah. In fact, Guardians had that whole thing where they went to like the collector's world. Oh, that was bad. Honestly, the best thing. And it the ends Guardians in a dance has... off. Oh, uh, I don't know. Let me tell you. Let me let's compare the two final scenes. And I and I I'm I. Hear me out. The best scenes at the climax for Guardians is when they do the fight. Not not the fight. Dance off. It's like, oh, why are you dancing? I'm just trying to save some time to so that we can power up that weapon. And then they use mm-hmm. a MacGuffin 
to basically to destroy. Yeah. And Thor Ragnarok, there is no MacGuffin. It is literally just Thor being himself, realizing that he is Odin's son. Did you already pick it? No. No, no, no. I just make sure it didn't. And it literally ends with him on a bridge full of his people willing to fight for their lives. With no Hela, weapon. Giant ass wolf being shot with a guy who's dual wielding AK 47s in a knight uniform to the. And then Hulk drops out of the goddamn sky. Now you have all these people on a light bridge, and it's like the black guy with the sword. You got Thor with lightning crazy powers that's, bouncing all around. They played, uh, that's when they played uh, Immigrant Song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's insane. You're like, you're, you're like, sitting ah! in your seat, and you're like, this is so metal. I literally cannot I believe this the one the scene. Is so, and it's that, a, is, that, is a, that is a great song for that scene. It is an insane yeah. sequence of moments. All compact, and what was the other movie? I almost have forgot Guardians. what you're talking about. If you compare this, to, this climax for that to the climax for Guardians of the Galaxy, it's like there's literally no competition. The like when you leave that movie, you're like, I saw something I credit, incredible. I will credit this. The reason I think Guardians is so good is because the memorable soundtrack, Peter Quill is such a believable character, yes. and the interaction of the cast between each other. Sure. That is what makes Guardians a good movie. But Thor has a really good story, and I think Guardians lacks on the story. I feel like I feel like Guardians of the Galaxy has so many crazy random MacGuffins at the end. Like, oh, Peter's half god, yeah. or like half alien. We didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, Peter has the psychic stone. Like, yeah. I didn't even know that was an important yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, like, there's just so many random things just yeah. come out at the very end that they like, don't really set up. Stone, I'm like, and I can kill you. And it's like, I thought you were just a regular dude from the 1970s who ran away from your mom. Like, yeah. where did all those extra things come from yeah. at the last minute? You know? It, yeah. yeah. Whereas, Odin has been Odin, Odin's son the entire time. The entire time, he just needed to get it out of him. And it's more of a deconstruction of him, and he didn't have all of his friends. He had to work through that whole movie to get oh, yeah. the Valkyrie on his side, to get Hulk on his side, to get Bruce Banner on his side to the point where he's willing to jump out of a plane, yeah. just turn into the Hulk, and because he hadn't turned into like Bruce in like ten years yeah. or whatever or something like I that. I think Thor. I think Thor Ragnarok is. It is also has an awesome music soundtrack. I'm just wondering, like, because before I had Guardians as my number one. Yeah, but I think I th I think if we're going off of like, I honestly I think Thor's the better movie. I think Thor Ragnarok. It's better acted. Everyone has more fun on it. I feel like it is better. And acted. it was Jeff and Goldblum. Honestly, the lines that he gives. I'm. Some people say I'm. I think a, it uh, was. I think they were both probably equally as risky. Yeah. Because Thor's coming off of two bad Thor movies. Mm. Guardians, a new franchise. Mm. But it had a talking raccoon and a talking yeah. tree. It's like, what are you gonna do with this? But Thor Ragnarok, I don't feel. I don't know. I went with Thor Ragnarok. What do you think? Thor Ragnarok. Let's go. Man, Thor and Age of Ultron. Ew. Age of Ultron. Age of Ultron has a better villain in my opinion. Yeah, it does. And it doesn't waste as much time with romances. Was there romance? Yes, yeah. it was. Oh, unnecessary romance movies. In your movies, you don't need them. Vision and, Vision and Scarlet Witch are they're kind of romance. Get rid of it. I'm sorry, yeah. yeah. Uh, Age of Ultron... I think Age of Ultron is the better is movie. The better movie here, and I'm gonna make that argument just for the sake that even if you're going to look at the the main the main, I think the protagonist antagonist dynamic in Age of Ultron, even though it's all the Avengers, sure, is Tony and Ultron. Right. And Tony has to reconcile with himself. I can't always do what is necessary to save everyone. But I'm going yes. to try. But sometimes I have to realize that I get Ultron. Right. And I, I have to make sure that I keep my power in check. Right. Because if not, I get Ultron. Right. If anything, it should have been called... I mean, if anything, it should have been Iron Man Age of Ultron. Iron Man Age of Ultron is what I think it should have been. Right. And then you don't need all I, these other I think characters. I take out Iron Man. You could take out Scarlet Witch. I think, you could take out the I Speedster think make dude. Iron, 3, Iron Man 3, Iron Man 2, and then make Iron Man 3... Take Iron Man 3... The third movie of Iron Man should be Iron Man Age of Ultron. <laughs> And get rid of Iron Man two altogether. And just get Iron, rid of Iron Man two altogether. Iron Man, Iron Man three, where we see Tony realize that he is Iron Man outside of the suit, and uh -huh. then Iron Man: Age of Ultron. It's like shit. I messed up. Yeah. I messed up really big, but I need to because fix this problem. Because the character arc would be and Captain America keeps giving me crap, but like I'm trying to fix the, the problem. Iron Man is who he is in Iron Man three is because it's after he fell out with. Went through the dark portal with that giant bomb thing, yep. and fell back out of the portal and realized he was about dead. Right. 
So he has this like fear of death. Right. But then he learns oh, more about totally get it. And then he realizes in Iron Man 3, Age of Ultron, that, hey, that attack on New York happened and it scared me for my life and probably people are tons of scared for their life. I want to create a robot that can try to keep that from happening and then suddenly bad things happen. Right. I think the whole thing and was... And that sets up who he is in <clears throat> Civil War. What, when Avengers 1 ended... Iron Man went through that portal, saw what the bad guys looked like when that bomb went through, mm-hmm. what fell back to our reverse, and was like, I saw... The if ca- they come here, we, we are need dead. something to kill them. We are dead, yeah. and we need to make something, because the six of us, or whatever how many are, Not ain't going to be back. enough. We need to make something. And he went too ambitious, because he didn't have yeah. the support of everyone, and he made a big mistake and made mm-hmm. Ultron. Yep. Took over the world, and he tried to do his best to contain that problem. Mm-hmm. But the entire time, Captain America was like, this is why we can't trust power. And he's like, you're right. This is why we need to give our power to the government. And so America, Captain America's like, no, 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 no. The no, no. The problem. Government's the problem, too. You, you're you just going from one extreme to the yep. next. You need to rein it in, Tony. It's like, you don't understand. We don't have a lot of time. Yep. It's like, we're not compromising because of time. It's like, we have to make compromises. They're coming after us. Do you understand that All of that, that capitalizes on the moment in Infinity War. Plus, your friend killed my mom. Fuck you. <laughs> so... So I think Age of Ultron is the better movie than Thor. It is. Thor. I think there's like some really interesting dynamics for at least the one main character in that yep. movie. So yeah. Yeah. How much? Okay, we're about Ooh. one third. Age one of fifth Ultron left. and Doctor Strange. I'd actually. I think Age of Ultron just be for the reasons that we just talked about. Plus we. They're we, I both think we both messes. agree that we really don't like Doctor Strange. They're both messes. They're both messes. But, but at least there's character arc. There's in something Ultron. more interesting in Age of Ultron than there is in Doctor Strange, which is really just there, a rehash of magical there is Tony at Stark. Least character arc I at least, least like the characters in Age of Ultron compared to uh, Doctor Strange. Do you want to ask them, Doctor Strange or Age of Ultron, which was the better movie? <laughs> Doctor oh, Strange. Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> what about you? I've never seen either. Of them. Okay, okay, oh, but you go with Doctor Strange. Why? It looks so okay, okay. Oh, okay. That's nice. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Um, Not good enough for you there. I think Age of Ultron. I think Age of Ultron too. We appreciate them. They're good. They're good. Thank you, kids. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> what's next? Uh, okay, so Age of Ultron. <laughs> Incredible Hulk and Age of Ultron. Age of Ultron. I think that's easy. Yeah. The Incredible Hulk is half a movie. It's half a movie. A lot of the movie shot in the dark, and it makes pretty for pretty bad composition. Yeah, it's and I'm also like, looks really. Bad I'm like, Ooh, this is bad. It looks really bad. It looks like t- Pixar from 1996. <laughs> it's really bad. Everything's super clean. It's Age really of, bad. Age of Ultron. Though I do want to watch that movie uh, again. Age of Ultron and yeah. Iron Man Two. And you know why I would pick Age of Ultron? Because I just said I'd get rid of Iron Man Two to yes. rearrange the go. entire yeah. trilogy. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah. They also have the worst Rhodey. So here's how crazy it is. Oh yeah, they had the they Rhodey. switched out Rhodey. From a light-skinned black guy with blue eyes to De- uh, Don Ch- Cheadle? Don Cheadle? De- Don. Yeah. And my thing the is, do they not think? Do they think those two guys look the same? Uh, no. Like, I hope not. Like, well, they're like just replaced with another black guy. No one's gonna care. Yeah. Like, the, the, like in the head of those people, are like, really? Could you not? Like, if he was complaining about how much money you were giving him, like, couldn't you just give more money? Like, did you not like plan that out? Like, was there like some weird thing? That and the guys don't even look the same. They don't look the same. Nope. There wasn't even an attempt. Like, one's like a strong, tall, built, kind of swole dude. Yep. The other one's like an old, frail man who's yep. like Frank Sinatra. Alright, like so Daniel Age of Ultron. Ultron. It's Age of Ultron. Let's go. Uh, what do we got? What do we got? Iron Man see? 3, Age of Ultron. Iron Man 3 and Age of Ultron. I've already said that I would move I think Iron, Iron Man, Man 3. I would already said I'd move Iron Man 3 to Iron Man 2. Yeah, I'd say Iron Man 3 is the better movie. Oh, they, they both have terrible villains, and I think Iron Man 3 is the better deconstruction of Tony Stark than Old of Ultron. Iron Man 3 is, if we're, if, if we would, if we would turn Iron Man, if we would turn Avengers Age of Ultron and just to an Iron Man movie, Iron Man 3 would be better. Yes. And so that's how I'm going to say, because we Oh, already... if you made Age of Ultron Iron Man 3 and made Iron Man 3 Iron Man 2. Yeah. You would say Iron Man 3 in this world would be better than Iron Man 2. But the fact of the matter is, in the reality that we have, it's not called Iron Man 3. It's it's, it's, Avengers, it's Avengers. Which means it's loaded down with a bunch and of bullshit. Every other Avenger in that movie could be tossed away. Completely, but it's not. And we have to sit and deal with yeah. it. There's a scene in that movie, I believe, where Thor literally goes away from everybody and swims in a pool that mm. has lightning in it. 
at, while he's having psychic powers I don't, on the press, I don't, which is never brought up again. No, it's I don't, useless. I, don't, I, don't, I would say Iron Man 3 Iron is the Man better 3. movie. There are dumb scenes in it, but it's kind of like anticlimactic dumb scenes. It's yeah. like, oh, you're not the real bad guy? No, I'm just a guy in a suit. It's like, yeah. who cares? See, if Iron, if, if Age of Ultron was Iron Man 3 Age of Ultron, I, Age of Ultron would be the better movie. Can I throw something out at yeah. you? So the whole movie is about like how Tony Stark isn't the suit. It's the guy in the suit. Yeah. But the main guy in the Mandarin isn't the reputation of Mandarin. It's like literally a guy just pretending to be Mandarin. And the actual villain's the guy that has the glowy hands. Sure, of course. But like the whole Mandarin aspect was kind of cool because it's like the bad guy is just a guy pretending to be someone he's not whereas the good guy is a guy who was pretending to be someone he wasn't but now realizes everything that was cool about him is actually him mm -hmm. himself so it's like a good parallel I think yeah. if anything Iron Man 3 um Infinity War and Iron Man 3 Infinity War and Iron Man 3 uh, if if so I think I mean, Infinity War is not a full movie dude if if Infinity War was no, if, I think if there was a, another act, Infinity War. No, I think Iron Man three has the best, has a better Iron. Mm. Here's how you make a good Infinity War, if I may. You don't have all the love interest stuff. You take that out. You may not. You don't have to force Stormbringer because we already established that Thor doesn't need a hammer. So yeah. why work fourteen scenes to show him making another weapon? That when he's already see, established, that he doesn't need again. He's already established. He doesn't need. It. He doesn't need the weapon. So like he's Thor without the I think I think Iron Man three, I think Iron Man because 3. we regress we, we regress in Infinity War. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. We, uh, characters that, who've been established, like for instance, you go backwards in Infinity War. Yeah, Thor Peter suddenly, Quill is dumb. Yeah, Thor suddenly thinks he needs his hammer again. There's a worse relationship between Peter Peace. Quill and Gamora. Yeah. There's an unneeded relationship between Vision and Scarlet Witch. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with. It, it Iron ends Man with 3. everybody dying and no resolution whatsoever. The only the only thing that Infinity War has over Iron Man three, honestly, in my opinion, is probably maybe some interaction between the characters. Sure. And Thanos is a better villain than Mandarin. Let me tell you something. You have scenes. You can't tell me a single line that Bucky Barnes says in that entire movie. You can't tell me a single line that ScarJo says in that entire movie. You can't tell me a single line that Falcon said in that entire movie. There are actors stuffed in just to say like, oh, and they're he's, just there, and he's in the movie, so we can put him on the poster. Yeah, but they have no business. They're being just there, there to be in an Avengers movie. Mm -hmm. But you could have still just made that Avengers movie, looking at the same Avengers that we've been looking. All at. All they do is punch grunts in the face. Yeah, and now half of them are dead, and so we don't even get like the, their side of the movie in the next movie. It's just dumb. Iron Man 3 gets it. Yeah. Iron Man 3 or Black Panther. Ooh. So. I would have liked Black Panther more if. Mm -hmm. If. Mm -hmm. Once Killmonger got the the seed. Mm -hmm. Black T'Challa. 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 Would have realized I'm actually Black Panther without the suit. That would have made that movie better for me. And he challenges he him without the suit? He challenges him without the suit and beats him showing I am definitive king of Wakanda. Oh, and shit. I don't need that suit. I don't need to be the Black Panther That's to be brilliant. the Black Panther. Yeah. That would yeah. have been more impactful, more powerful. He just comes out there completely tribal. And, and you ready? like, you ready and, to do this? And you ready? Like, I'm ready That's to That's what Iron you. Man 3 does. Iron Man 3 is Tony gets the suit ripped away from him. Yeah. And he goes back in there to fight this guy saying, I'm Tony Stark. I'm Iron Man. Yeah. I don't need that suit. Right. I'll kick your ass without it, even if you do have powers. And he beats his ass anyway. And he beats his ass anyway. And that's when he realizes, like, shit, you are the king of Wakanda, but I'm just so angry about these people. And it's like, don't worry, I got your people, but, like, now I'm the king. And it's like, fine but don't even try to sack don't even try to spare me just let me die out here like the the people throw me in the sea like all the people blah 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 see, I'm like cool i got you fam black panther would be more impactful if t'challa comes take back out the suit and takes and he doesn't need the suit he just comes back and he he's got the people behind he him claims like, rightful heir of wakanda through nothing but himself. He doesn't need to be powerful, hyped up no. guy. I he does it himself. Still have like the army of people, but he's like, I'm willing to challenge you one-on-one. -on -one. And the guy's like, I don't need to challenge you one-on-one. -on -one. I got the suit. I'm already the king. He's like, no, I'm challenging you. I'm the king. I got the rightful heir. 
let's go. You didn't kill me the first time. That's your mistake. I'm back to kick your ass. And yep. he's like, fine. I got all this power. Everybody attack that army behind him. I got this. I got this fool right here. And he actually wins and mm -hmm. kicks his ass, even though he's got that powerful even gold suit. He does have He the manages suit. it somehow. Yep. And he kicks the ass. And the guy's like, yes. God damn, you beat me. But look, I'm doing this for all these other people that are down. It's like, don't worry, I got them, but I'm the king. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yep. respect. I'm the black fam. I respect. Yep. But you're right. My dad was mean to you. I'm not going to make those same mistakes, and I got our fam. Yep. So, but I'm the king. It's like, fine, don't but, spare me. But kill I me think, this time. I think what enhances, if I survive, I'll kill you. That's yep. like, you're right. I think what enhances Black Panther. Man, that's a good way to end it. Is is he comes back, and he, and he wins the fight without that suit. Shit, yeah, that's a good way to yep. do it. I like that. I like that. That's fantastic. And Iron Man 3 and did Iron that. And Iron Man 3 does that. Iron Man 3 wins. That's uh, a great argument. Ant-Man and the Wasp and that's, Iron Man 3. That's a great argument. Um, Ant-Man and the Wasp is a better movie than Iron Man 3. I know I you haven't Ant -Man seen it. I think Ant-Man is better than Iron Man 3. It is very much And if Ant-Man and the Wasp is on par with Ant-Man, are Man, They I are surprisingly very Wasp. similar movies. I think the... Is there anything that Ant-Man Ant and the Wasp does better than Ant-Man? Better villain. Better villain is what you said. Much better villain. And but, I think the villain in Iron Man 3 is kind of weak. Yeah. 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 There are some so silly scenes in Ant-Man and the Wasp. I think you'd really love to. I think I'm, I'm going to yeah, go Ant-Man and the Wasp. Yeah. If you like that, man, just think of it as that, man. Iron Man and Ant-Man and the Wasp. Iron Man and Ant-Man and the Wasp? Yeah. What would you... I would say Ant-Man's better than Iron Man. I would say, uh, oh look, this is what it looked like when I came here the first time. It was just like loaded with peeps. Okay. Yeah. So here is my. Not a lot of foot traffic. Here's though, my quick see. argument for. Uh, I'm gonna throw out my argument for Iron Man. Okay, I'm listening. I I think it could be fair. Go for um, it. Iron Man has a story of a of of Tony. Yeah. Being Tony to get rich to make money off of selling weapons and he doesn't really he doesn't care one who it impacts and two who he really is selling I the weapons I forgot all to. about that. I could say for that arc and alone. And then it's and then good. what happens yeah. is he 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 gets his weapons sure. that somebody took used on him. Yeah. He gets put into a situation that he has to fight for his life. I don't want to spoil the movie for you, but for the argument that you've said that is good enough reason alone to rank it higher. There's things that happen in Iron Ant Man and Wasp that that is a detriment to itself, but it only happens at the very end. So yes, and it's not even like part of the actual movie. I don't want to spoil it. Go for it. Iron Man wins, but check out Ant Man and Wasp. I want I want to see when you do, you'll understand what I'm saying. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, uh, Thor and Thor Dark World. Thor is a better yeah, movie. Yeah, Thor is better. I, like I said, Thor Dark World. There's nothing worse than Thor Dark World. <laughs> Thor Dark World's so bad. I told you, Natalie Portman's only times. in that movie to be a MacGuffin. Which is why Ragnarok is so good. Yeah. Thank you, Ragnarok. <laughs> it's so um, good. Oh, man. A movie with very poor pacing versus a movie with very poor pacing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say this. It's like the battle of brain. I will say this. Um, Thor has so many disposable characters Literally, since because Thor Ragnarok, only one sur character, sur only two characters survive out of that whole mess. And Thor has a bunch of friends in Asgard. You don't see any of them again. You have the black guy who owns the gates. As um, I don't know. Now that you say, Bucky and Captain Rogers and the Agent Shield lady that he should have maintained a romance with, even though it had been weird, yeah. are the only ones that survived this. Movie. You see Tony Stark's dad though. That's honestly, cool. I think I think Captain America is the better movie here. I think Captain America, the first Avenger. Is what happens at the end Thor. of Thor? At the end of Thor, does he go back to Asgard and says, "I'll never," and makes and kisses Natalie Portman? Is that how that? Yeah, works? basically. Oh, okay. Thor's very much. It's a, a romance novel. It's basically. a romance it's like about a, a thrift store romance novel. It's like a it's a romance about a guy who apparently has too much power, so it's got to be stripped away from okay. him so he can learn responsibility. Yeah, but Captain America is so poorly paced. It really is. I'm telling you, the first, like, 50 minutes of it... It's not even a good war movie. It's not even a good no. war period. You and always... then you have a scissor reel. Yeah, you have scissor uh, reel in the middle. They're both, they're both not all that great. Uh, yeah, and you don't even have good Loki because he doesn't have time to play... Loki's not good until the Avengers. Right. Loki's not good until the Avengers because he doesn't... Uh, but, in that, but in that fairness, that leaves basically the bad guy just being... 
Like, remember when we Iron saw Man. Red Skull in Affinity War and you're like, oh. Huh. Oh, you exist. Like, oh, it you're wasn't here. like, ooh, that guy. It you're wasn't like, like, oh, you're here. <gasps> it wasn't like even like, you didn't even have no emotion. You're just like, yeah. oh, I thought you'd be death. It turns out you're not even cool. You're like yeah. the weird dude. No, you're just me. Red Skull. And that's the best yeah. villain that Captain America ever put out. So I'm like. And I'm like, oh, nope, it's just you being here. Yeah. I was literally like, oh, okay. You've been here the whole time? All right, and that's play. the villain. I, honestly, they're, they're, they're like, <sighs> here's, and here's my other issue. Steve Rogers doesn't have a character arc can in I, can Captain I throw America. Can I what the at character arc should just be? And this is not, this is not popular and you may not even like it, but it doesn't have to be ex- extrovert, but it should be a bromance situation. Do you understand? Captain America? I mean? Yes. Yeah. Captain America and Bucky. The Barnes. whole movie should just be Cap Cap and Bucky going and beating like, the shit out of Nazis. Listen, I believe you exactly. It should just be like, even though you're scrawny, you got the heart of That's a soldier. That's why Winter Soldier Let's would go. make more sense. Is he because gave himself he... the shots, and it's just these two guys being bromance, and you're just like, yeah. This is why. Yep. No one's gonna get in between me. And, and at this the guy. end of the movie, he loses Bucky, and then he thinks everything's over. But he knows that he still has to stop Red Skull. Right. And he does it anyways. Yes. Sacrifices his life to save everything and then when he comes back and winter i lost soldier, my war buddy and then when he comes back in winter soldier he realizes hey wait a minute yeah like he's still alive yes but he's not a bro anymore yeah and that makes yeah um so that would be that would make a better captain but, america but movie. technically all those scenes are in there they're just watered down by a bunch of other scenes they're 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 watered down by the whole setup to him becoming captain america yes. with this dumb thing where he's doing like psa's yeah there's, and then they scissor reel all the stuff that shouldn't be scissor reeled. All the scissor reel stuff where him and Bucky are beating the f out of Nazis. But they are. That is what we need. But those the scenes. Whole movie are, to be. But technically, those scenes are in there. There is nothing that's watered down in Thor aside from what Thor already is. That's true. I, I Thor, Thor is, is already concentrated. Movie. No way. Are you serious? Okay. For what? <laughs> there are scenes. I'll, I'll, I'll put uh, this. What's the coolest theme in Thor versus coolest theme in <laughs> Civil War? So Captain America, there's a scene literally where he bucks down the door, asks Captain America with a freaking gun, and just shoots Nazis in the face from his perspective. That's cool. Okay, yeah. And he makes a black friend back there's, in the 1940s. No cool, That's awesome. There's no Mark. cool scenes in Thor, really. There's no cool scenes in Thor, as far as I'm aware. Slams that coffee Plus, there's a down. shit ton of Natalie Portman, yeah. like, eyeing up Thor in that movie. I'm almost like, yeah, I get it. Uh, like, I'm going to go with Captain America. I'm going to go with Captain America, but we've both stated why these movies could be better movies. Yes. I think, I think what are we picking right now is like... I think... You have, you have, you have, like, bad, nasty food, and you have slightly yeah. worse bad, yeah, nasty food. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Captain America is not bad in the sense that it doesn't have anything good. It's that the good things are watered down or skipped over too quickly. Yeah. Whereas Thor doesn't really have anything worth <laughs> Just value. Just it doesn't have anything good. It's not even it's not even best of any of those characters at their potential. It's not no. until Thor Ragnarok where it's just like all these characters could be like this and you're like <gasps> Good. And you're like, and Natalie Portman could just be gone. And gone! You're like, yes! Literally you could just have Thor and Loki and we're like, Yes! Yeah. Let's just have Thor and Loki from this franchise. Yep. Get rid of everybody else and maybe yeah. the black guy from so Asgard. So Captain America that's it. does Yeah, better. let's do it. Boom. We're almost done. Doctor Strange and Captain America. I really don't like Doctor Strange's character, but Captain America... Like, I'm going to make this I argument. I think Cap- Doctor Strange is the better film. Captain just from America a director. does not have an arc in his movie. Right. From the beginning of the movie, he has very He's much died for, for my, died for my fellow man. Exactly. At the end of the movie, he has died for my fellow man. He, but Doctor Strange nothing. is an asshole at the beginning and an asshole at the end. He doesn't really learn anything either, except for magic, which is <laughs> the... The, go- he just becomes, the sad thing is he doesn't even use magic. He just uses he just, the stone, to, the time the stone. Is, is is Captain America Captain America dies like okay here's the thing go for it Captain America suddenly becomes powerful yeah and just beats up everybody okay Doctor Strange suddenly just becomes powerful and beats up everybody yes but their actual characters are the same in the ending and the beginning and the only there's no arc in either movie and the and, and both the villains are throwaway so, villains that don't matter who yeah Dormammu Dormammu or and, that guy with the, mar- the Dormammu and Red Skull are both useless so what's the what's the let's rate it on sidekicks then what are the two that we're comparing Bucky and Bucky and the fat Asian dude fat Asian monk they are, <laughs> these are bad movies 
romance then? Do they have romances? I find like the romance interest is more classy. Doctor Strange throws away his romance interest. Doesn't he? He has he a does. He straight up throws her away. Whoa, I forgot that about that completely. And then he comes back and he's like, fix me up a little bit because I just suddenly teleported in here out of nowhere. And yeah, she's by like, the way, hi, I haven't called you What the hell are you forever. doing? Where have you been? It's like, oh. And he's like, oh, by the way, I don't care about you actually though. I'm going yeah, back. by the way, how did you know about some... She should have been Asian. I'm done. I'm done. She should have been Asian. I, I, honestly, Captain America is probably the better movie. Here. Captain America is a better movie. They both suck. <laughs> they literally <laughs> both suck. Captain America... Listen... If anything, Captain America is a more likable character than Doctor Strange. Yeah, I'll agree. He would never drive in a Maserati with a cell with phone, a cell phone, going around corners, get in a car like accident, miles per and then blame like the technology in his for- unfortunate situation. Yeah. He'd be like, "I was an asshole, and I yeah. I, I deserve that yeah. to happen to me." Captain America. He jumped on a grenade. Oh, Captain America and the Hulk. I think Captain America is a better movie than the Hulk movie. Okay. Yeah, the Hulk is just the Hulk. The Hulk, other than Edward Edward Norton in it. Like every every scene with the Hulk is mm. actually just bad. Mm. Every scene with like yeah. Captain America being Captain America is good, but every scene with the Hulk being the Hulk yeah, that's is a bad. great way to put it. But like, I do think Edward Norton is a better actor than Steve uh, Chris Steve, Chris Pines, whatever his name Chris, Chris Pine Chris no Chris Pine's blue eyed guy from Star Trek sorry Chris not Chris Pratt that's Peter Quill Chris move on Steve Rogers let's yeah, move Steve on Rogers, whatever. Captain America. Captain America and Iron Man 2. Man. Uh, we're, 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 the, we're in the like mid-range to I feel like range. it. Captain America and Iron Man 2. Uh, they switched that roadie and acted like we wouldn't notice the difference. He's just like, like they switched see you Claire, later, roadie. Like they switched Claire and my wife and kids and we're like, yeah, well, we can just switch black actors and you will never notice. And you're like, they don't all look the same. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Woo. That's funny. You're like, stop doing that and thinking that we can't tell like, the difference between facial structures like, of people. Do you really think, like, the hair is different? Everything's literally different. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Unless you just aged the other actor by 20 years. I think Iron Man 2 is the better movie. It actually has a villain that's more intimidating than, Red like, Skull? Red Skull literally has a red face. That is the only thing about him. Red Skull's not intimidating. He's just literally Nazi, dude. And that's that's he's it. He's a Nazi with a red face. That's literally all he has. Iron Man Whereas t- that guy has whips. Literally, that's... I'm, I'm sorry that's a bad criteria, but like... Yeah. Iconically, what does one do that the other one doesn't? Like, the one guy actually developed Iron Man technology, but never got the credit for it. Yeah. Like, Red Skull is just a Nazi with a red face. Yeah, I'm going to go he's with an, Iron Man 2. Go for it. He's an angry Nazi with a red face. Yeah. The villain is better or captivating. I think Winter Soldier and Iron Man 2. I think Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier are easy. Yeah. This is easy. <laughs> yeah, that one is. We're wrapping it up. Uh, Age of Ultron and Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier, let's go. Uh, Yeah, better what? spy movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Avengers is a nothing movie. No, no like I said... It should if have been Avengers, an Iron Man movie. If Avengers was Iron Man three, Age of Ultron, yeah. it would be better than it would be better than Winter Soldier, but it's not. Yeah, I'm glad we <laughs> have that talk. Yeah, it's not. Uh, Winter Soldier is better than Winter Infinity Soldier War. is better than Infinity War. And Winter Soldier and Infinity War is too. Yeah, yeah. Winter Soldier is better than Infinity War. Yes. It's Winter Soldier. Oh, Winter Soldier, Black Panther. Winter Soldier. Yeah. The There's spy- actual acting in Winter Soldier. Black Panther is like as I said. With your ending, I would change my position. Yeah, but it's I think if you threw my ending in there, it would ch- it would change. It would, it change, would change it. everything. It would change it. It would be a more impactful story. Yes. Yeah. It's just like now. It's like I'm Black Panther, not the suit, but I am T'Challa. And then, and then I when he comes the back Panther. to fight him, throw in like a really powerful like fight song. Yes. Like immigrant song with yes. a good fight song. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah totally. Yeah. 10, like, something like something like that. Yeah, you know. For the end of this movie, would make that movie better. Yeah. So I'm gonna go Winter Soldier. All right. Is it uh, evil? Ooh, Winter Soldier, Iron Man 3. What are the two? Winter Soldier and Iron Man 3. Winter Soldier. Yeah, I guess it is better. Yeah, because the bad guy... It's literally, as you said, you get the defining moment where Steve sheds Captain America. Like, he's... He sheds he sheds government idea of Captain America and becomes... He becomes, I am an individual. The, I am Captain yeah. America, not your Captain America. I my own Captain America. And I think the stakes are higher for... I think the stakes are higher for Captain America in Winter Soldier than they are for maybe Iron Man in Iron Man 3 because even though Tony's running around without the suit mm. and he's not really all that strong, mm. uh, he's up against like a really shit villain. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go with Winter Soldier. Cool. Ant-Man and the Wasp, Captain America, Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. Uh, 
Yeah, if it was Ant Man versus Winter Soldier, it's, it's a, a different, different story. story. But Winter Ant Man and the Wasp makes some crucial mistakes at the late game, and it's not that it makes it a bad movie, but Ant Man is superior. So I w- it's not a fair comparison to say Ant Man and Winter Soldier. Is that Denisha say what's up? He told her I said hi. Uh, so Winter Soldier. Yeah. Winter Soldier and Iron Man. Winter Soldier, only. I'm gonna go with Winter Soldier Winter because Soldier. It, it sets up a defining moment for Steve. Doesn't he try to shoot Bucky, but Bucky shoots him back, and Steve didn't shoot him back? No, no, no. It's he still hasn't learned finally that he can't trust. He still tries to trust Bucky. Mm. He's still like, "You're Bucky. You're my friend." Yeah. And he's like, "Nah, I'm someone else. You don't know me." And he's like, "Bye." And then he's like, oh, oh, I thought I knew everybody. And that's, it's, it's when we see Steve Rogers at his How's that movie end again? Like, I know Bucky is, like, in the museum looking up his history. But, like, how does that movie end before? That's when he's, like, in the ship and Bucky shoots him in the chest. Or he, the stomach, right? Or whatever happens, yeah. 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 And then Bucky falls off and goes somewhere else. And then Steve's yes. on the ship as it crashes. Yes. He's yeah. just, he's, Bucky, Captain America refuses to shoot Bucky. But Bucky shoots him. Because he still sees... His He's the friend. one person I can trust in this world of people I cannot trust. Yes, Winter Soldier is better. Like yeah. I get his pathos it's, it's more. Bucky at his, it's, it's Captain America at his lowest. It's like, I used to love everybody in this country. This whole country sucks, but I still love America. But yeah. I don't even trust anyone here anymore. Now I have Bucky, the one little man and he's, and he's I got my Bucky. bromance with. And he, he's not even and remember it, himself. And it sets up, and it sets up. Honestly, it sets up who Captain America is going to be in Civil War. Yes. And without without Winter Soldier, yeah. Captain America in Civil War would make less sense. Yeah, and not only that, but it also plays the the whole, um, I'm not just I'm Steve Rogers. I'm a man that has been alive and not aged since the 1950s. Yeah. And no one I know looks like me. No one I know thinks like me. I am literally an arch- archetype from a different That's time. That's why I feel so alone. Like, literally no one... Yeah. I'm an alien in a world that no yep. one... I, I it's don't, him and his lowest. I don't like this world. Yep. It's him and his lowest, and Iron Man is almost Iron Man at his highest. Yes. So, Winter Soldier. <laughs> almost Iron... Civil War is almost Iron Man at his highest. There are other movies do Iron Man better. Yeah. Um, Iron Man, I think, at... Oh, we're getting to the end, because we got Winter Soldier again, right? And Guardians yeah, of Yeah, Winter Soldier, Ball. Guardians 2. Winter Soldier's slowly moving up the list. Yeah, where does it stop, right? That's that's the that's the point. <laughs> is it better than Guardians of the Galaxy two? I would say, as a focus story, yes, because Guardians of the Galaxy. Who Guardians of the Galaxy two makes has like, one crucial mistake. Has five main characters. It splits yeah. the cast. It splits the cast. And the and like I said, yes. Guardians. The reason Guardians was so good is because the dynamic that the cast have yes. together yes. in between each other. Yes. And what they did was they were yes. like, we split the cast. And finally, when I think they, after they got to the end of shooting, they were yes. like, we need to get this cast back together because yeah. this movie's starting to seem really weak and it's too plain. Sure. And I I know this is kind of fundamental, but the whole Peter Quill as a god. The, I just feel like that's unnecessary for his character. I don't feel like he needed to be one. He didn't. He literally could have just been a straight up human from the 1970s. That's more appealing to me mm-hmm. than him being half god, half alien. Yeah, I'm or half, go with, half, half I'm god, go half Winter alien. Soldier. Yeah, I go Winter Soldier. Yeah. Oh no, I think, <laughs> I think Civil War. It stops at Civil War. I think Civil War stops at Civil Soldier. War. That's fine. Civil War. Yeah, I it. think Civil War is a better Black Panther movie too. Civil War is the better Black Panther movie. It's the better... It ends with him taking his mask off and talking to a guy. It's the better Captain America Bucky movie. Yes, it is. And it's, it's the better Iron Man it's movie. It's the best Iron Man it movie. Is, you take all three of these characters, <laughs> and it is the best culmination of these characters had been And you want to know screen. what else? You want to know what else? These two movies directed by the same person, or same two groups of dudes. Same two dudes. Mm-hmm. That's how you know we're at least being consistent. Mm-hmm. Because all the other Captain Americas were not directed by the the Lufos brothers or something yeah, like that, yeah. but they directed both of these movies yeah. and did an incredible job. And they Civil, are great with storylines. And although Winter Soldier is good, your tires are so much thicker. <laughs> okay. Uh, although Winter Soldier is good, Civil War is the culmination of three or like three of the best storylines. Best Best Black Panther. Yeah. Best Iron Man. Now, if if. If you had if you had the Black Panther I talked about from the Black Panther movie, the one I hypothetically put at the end of the Black Panther movie, yeah. where Black yeah. Panther comes back and he just fights Killmonger sure, yeah, himself, yeah. Uh-huh. I think that would actually be the best Black Panther. Sure. But it's not. That, no, that yeah. Black, that Black yeah, Panther sure. doesn't exist. It would just be a better Black Panther movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Black Panther doesn't exist. No. 
We're and dealing with reality. Civil Wars, Civil Wars yeah. the uh, I would actually say the aspects of what you said about your modified Black Panther movie are seen in Civil War because oh, yeah. you don't have him in a suit kicking the bad guy's butt. You have him taking off the suit and being like, I don't need my Black Panther powers to stop you. To stop you. And I'm not going to kill you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to bring you to justice because I'm better than you. Yeah. Like, I, I get think that. Civil War. On top of that, Civil War is the is is actually the Avengers movie where all the Avengers can be in it and not seem like a bunch of just useless extras. You got Spider Man introduced in that yeah. movie. Yeah. You got Iron Man in that movie. Under rules. Yeah, that's our first scene of Spider Man. Like you see his origin. And he you get Spider Man's origin and Black Panther movie. And, mo- and he wraps up Captain America. Yeah, and it's like, where are you from, kid? Queens. Queens. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Perfect <laughs> scene. Oh my gosh. I'm like, when I saw it, I'm like, Civil, oh, Civil War. that's better than Martha Martha. Civil like, War. that's just like, hey, we get each other. Even though we're on opposite sides, like, we kind of get understand each other. Uh, like, Civil yeah. War is better than the Avengers. So good. Civil War is better than Civil the Avengers. War is better than the Avengers. Yeah. And Higher highs, lower lows. I think. S- oh. Civil War and Spider Man Homecoming. I would say Spider Man Homecoming is the better movie. Any 10 minutes from Civil War, you need to be near the end. It's a lot of buildup. There are a lot of scenes where it's Zemo in a hotel. What's he doing in a hotel? He's telling the, the, the waiter, hey, bring me some electrical coils. It's like, okay, sure. And there's scenes where he's like building something or like moving keys to another building. There's scenes where he's yeah. interviewing guys like uh, architect, All trucker, 34, race car. I'm like, what is what are these scenes All the for? Scenes with Zemo are bad. What's going on? And then finally it all adds up and you're like, great, but like, man, there was a lot of build up in this movie. So there's scenes where it's just like I feel like those scenes I know it's like a lot of stuff culminating to a point. Yeah. And when it hits that point, holy crap, amazing. But Spider Man is constantly like you're seeing it from Peter Parker's perspective. And his movie is I'm incredible, I'm an Avenger too. I don't have any powers whatsoever to... I want to prove it to everybody. No, I want to prove it to myself. And now I don't need your powers anymore because I proved it to myself. All right. So... <sighs> Civil War... So what are we chatting about? Uh, now we're talking about Marvel movies, yeah. I guess. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Civil War... has a very... I will, I will say the scenes with Zima are very few and in between. Uh, they happen enough times where you notice the dip in pacing. It, every time Zima's on screen is bad. Yeah. I will agree. Um, not uh, bad because he's a bad actor. Just bad because no, you not, have no idea what he's trying to Not because he's bad because he's a bad actor. Uh, bad because I think it would be better to have kept him hidden until you finally get to that military base. So you have to question, maybe it is really lucky he's doing these things. Maybe it is Bucky who's actually out here causing this, and maybe there's not a reason. You don't have to rewrite the story. I'm just saying Spider-Man doesn't need a rewrite. That's why it's better. But I will argue that Spider-Man has just as many pointless moments when you're talking about the times where they're showing him in high school. Yeah, they're showing him running around with just his friends doing nothing. I mean, if you like more information. I just want to tell you, you are wrong. Spider-Man <laughs> is the best superhero ever. <laughs> and, and as much as Zima's bad, Zima doesn't take up as much time as BS high school drama in, in Spider-Man does. And I think that's what really, like... Can I throw one thing out? You, Spider-Man is a high school movie. I know, I know. It is probably one of the best high school but movies. But in that, but in that case, what are we comparing this against? Civil War. Civil I know this is hard. I know this is. Hard. In the, but in that case, Civil War is very much a movie where you need Zima in there to have that to have that subterfuge that's trying to break the team apart. Because let's let's throw it. Civil War is the culmination of we are trying to hold this team together. There are, and everything we can see right now is okay. causing them to distrust each other. I and had a moment of weakness. You are correct. Civil War is the better movie. But only because I'm sold more on the idea of it's the better Black Panther movie. It's the best Iron Man movie. It's an incredible Captain America movie. And it's the Spider-Man origin movie all wrapped up in one. And it is the best and it has Avengers the best cli- movie. Yes. And it has an incredible climax that is a gut-wrenching low for Tony Stark who we've followed since Iron Man. Yeah. And 
And at that point in time, what we see at the end of that movie is we see I agree. the breakup of the Avengers. I agree. And the stakes are just yeah. crazy high. Yeah, and it's done through just one man who pitted one them against man. each other. Not even he doesn't even have superpowers. He doesn't even have superpowers. He breaks this team apart by exploiting every he, weakness he that they have. He went to a Lowe's in their and humanity. Bought- <laughs> not not in their superpowers. He he he, he understands their humanity. the humanity yeah. between them all. Yes. And he plays on that to ruin them. Yeah, and, and not that's, only. And that's more than that, that's more than Loki did as a yeah. superpowered. It was guy. the best thing to come out of Avengers. 2. And it's more than Ultron did as a yeah. superpowered AI. Yeah. This yeah. guy was just a normal dude. Yeah, it, it was the best thing to come out of Avengers. Ultron. Yeah. yeah, Age of Ultron. Even more so than Vision. Got it. That was rough, by the way. I I, I know, I know. <laughs> I would say Civil War is better than Ant Man, only because of that. Everything we said. Yeah. I think Ant Man's a great. Ant Man's a great film. But Civil War is the I've better said, of the films. Ant Man's one of the best heist films. Yes. Period. That, pe- that period. I think exists. Yeah. So I would. I'm willing. But Civil War is the Civil better. Civil War has higher highs, lower lows. Oh, Civil War and Guardians. I think this is the last one. I don't think this is the last one. Guardians doesn't have a bad. Guardians has a bad villain. I think Zima's actually a good villain. I think he does what it. I think he does. <laughs> let me. Let, I hear what you're me. saying. I think Zima does more to break apart the Avengers than what any other villain has ever done in the oh, Marvel Oh, of course, universe. of course. But here, here's the thing. Are you going to argue that? Name the a guy. single song from Civil War. Oh, are we going off a of soundtrack? I'm just saying. Listen, I'm just. I'm, gonna, I'm. I'm throwing out a bunch of things, but you would agree that there's a better soundscape in Guardians of the Galaxy, right? Yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy Guardians. not only hits Earth, but it hits the planet Crete, it hits planet Skrill, it goes to the Collector's home base. It see, you see uh, things in galaxies that you never thought you'd see. Mm, it's an epic. Don't it's, don't don't make the, don't make the argument that jumping around like that is good because remember that's what we downgraded Infinity War. It's for. called Guardians of the Galaxy. You see the galaxy. It's like an amazing thing. We've never been taken into space before yeah, until this movie, but, and we okay. do it such a good job. Is it worth seeing all the points in these galaxies if some of these points are bad? Now, like, for instance, you can Talk make the me. argument that we see Canto Bite in The Last Jedi, but that scene doesn't mean that it's good. All right. We see the Collector in this movie in his place. I'm just but saying. that doesn't mean that scene is good. I'm just saying when we go to Sokovia in Civil War... It's like, well, now we're just in a bunker. No, we that's, could've... that's Egypt. Oh, Sokovia to go back to like, yeah. the war bunker. Yeah, it's just like, now we're just in a bunker. And then we go to another place, but now we're just in a mall. Okay, so it doesn't feel like setting, we've really moved talking, a lot of place. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm making an argument of like story and villain. And, and, all right, if you want to go to story and villain, here's the thing. You do get your Spider-Man origin story. You do get your Black Panther origin story in Civil War. But in this movie, you get your Quill sto- or, uh, origin story. You get your Rocket Raccoon origin story you get your drax origin story you get your gamora origin story you get every all those you knew didn't know any of those people yet you see them all at once and their characterization is amazing i'm just saying like the cast is more fleshed out here than any of those people in the back row like i can tell you iron man and captain america are there and then maybe black panther way 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 in the back all those other characters who are in between them i don't care falcon what's falcon do in civil war Oh, he's the guy who's trying to stick with Iron Man. He's or not Captain America. Yeah, but like he's you start seeing he's a look, man who runs with them at the beginning, right? They run with each other. Wait, or is that his Winter Soldier? That's Winter Soldier, know, let me isn't just, it? Let me just make go for it. Go for it. Civil War isn't about the team coming together. Mm. That's why you don't see all this team coming together. It's about it's about the dangers of what happens if the Avengers break apart. When, when Civil War is happening, what you're seeing is a slow dismantling of the team that was the Avengers into separate groups based on the, ideolo- the ideological differences of these two viewpoints that Tony and Captain America have. And this, this thing is like, this division is starting to happen even though Tony and Captain America are trying to, even though they disagree on this, they're trying to stay friends. Sure. And he's trying to understand, they're trying to understand each other's viewpoints. And it's very much, I mean, it's, it very much keeps that, that whole thing between them. And what, what Cap, what Tony can see is Captain America is starting to side less with him Mm. and start siding more and more with Bucky, even though he has, he's been with Tony in this world and Tony thinks that they're really good and Bucky, it's, it's very, Cap's very past life, new life. Sure. 
and Tony is very, and then the whole dynamic with him and Tony and the team breaking apart, and everything is just mass friction within the group, and all that they're trying to do at this whole point is hold the group together. Oh my gosh, let's let's give this one at least ten more minutes. Okay, okay, okay. Here's my thing, um, and I totally agree with that. I we these are the last two movies because we both agree these are great, fantastic movies. But I'm, what I'm saying is. Um, the first half of Civil War is weak. The last half is amazing. The first half of Guardians of the Galaxy is great. The second half, also great. It's literally until like the part where you realize like, oh, I guess I'm part alien and this is like a power stone from somewhere. Like, mm, that's, that's your, a weird that's thing. That's weak part? Like, oh. I, what's, I feel like that's the weakest part of the whole movie, but like really not even like that big of a deal because there might be a second no, one. I you think, might learn that I more, think more about that. everything from by the scene with the Collector onwards is probably bad in Guardians. Where they're trying to offload the Power Stone and then they realize that it's a lot more powerful than they expected. And then Drax has to fight And then Thanos everything is, uh, comes down to like... I think it's sort of like the pacing starts getting awry there. Mm -hmm. And then by the time we make it to the culmination at the end of the movie, mm -hmm. it's just like Peter Quill's just winning because apparently now he's a god. And apparently now he can win with this Infinity Stone. And so apparently now that... The weird thing is... Uh, what was the Infinity Stone at the start of the movie? It was in this like deep cave on this abandoned planet... Peter goes to retrieve it, and he runs into uh, the black guy that tries to stop him. And 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 then he escapes that guy. But he goes to the planet where he meets Rocket Raccoon. Raccoon sees him because he's he's a, got a warrant out for his arrest. Right. And he wants to get the warrant. Right. And that's when things go awry and they get thrown in jail. I just feel like the first half of Civil War is like I know where all the character motivations are coming from. Yeah. But man, is it a the first half of the first half of Civil War. Where are we going with this? And then it hits, and you're like, "Thank you for going there." Yes. So then, how would I say it? a movie? But that... I don't feel like the start of Guardians of the Galaxy sets up for the impact at the end of the movie. I'll put it this way: it goes all out with a bang, okay. and then ends on a low point. Where Civil War, you end and you're like, oh my god, I want to know what's happening next because you're like... All my friends hate each other. All my, you're like, you're like, I don't know what's happening. I need to know. You, Civil War had a better emotional impact than Infinity War, where literally character half the characters in the world died. Greed? Like, seeing your friends split and not be friends anymore is more hurtful than seeing them fade to dust and fade away into the wind. As, oh yeah, as, Civil War's way better than Infinity War. But I'm saying... um. I'm going to throw two things out for Guardians of the Galaxy. Even if it doesn't win, I just want to throw it. It satisfied my need for seeing a Cowboy Bebop movie. If it was... I agree, but... Which is like just a smart space movie, old school music, great cast of characters, everyone's having fun, various different personalities, and we learn about them, and it culminates in them taking down a threat. But they learn to... That Even if that threat was poorly... Okay. He was but, Killmonger. He was Blue Killmonger. He was bad. He was a Blue Killmonger. He was bad. Killmonger was bad. Yeah, he was. A lot of people don't say that. But. Yeah, no, he was. No, but what I'm saying is... How much, how much battery? We we're, we're probably approaching into battery we're life. Probably so we, can, we, we got... We got to... Yeah, it's okay. both red. So let's let's see, wrap it up. I see your argument. Civil War. Let's do it. I, and I'm not saying Guardians is no, a good movie. No, these are both great but movies. But I'm, I'm just saying that... We might have one more after this, which might be Thor Ragnarok. Oh, yeah. Let's knock Ooh. it. See what's up. It is. It is. Oh. oh. The one that has the most impact on me is probably Civil War. Oh, no, we have two after this because we have to judge Thor Ragnarok versus... Uh, oh, no, did we, we put Thor Ragnarok over yeah. Guardians. Let's try to make this quick. I think Civil War is the better movie. I think Civil War is the Because you got Black movie. Panther... The best Black Panther. You got the origin for Spider Man. You got the best Iron Man movie. And the emotional impact at you the end the of that highs movie and the is you're level. just like, 
You oh literally go God, from Tony Stark to being like, I'm a superhero to, I want to kill that guy. I will murder him. And I don't care. And I really don't and care he if he's your friend anymore. And doesn't care the team's getting ripped apart for No, it. and I don't care what, he killed my mom. And at the end Fuck of it, you. what you see is Captain America be like, look, I still kind of want to be friends with a cell phone look. if you ever need to reach me. And it, it, you just feel like you watch all of your friends get into the biggest fight sure. of your life. It did everything Infinity War tried to do, but ended but better, the movie. But better. And actually had some closure. And with kinda. a guy that didn't even have superpowers. Boom. We're done. And now <laughs> we have finalized the list. Let me get it on camera. Wait, wait. I, Let me get it on camera, just so in case something happens, we can record it. All right, there we go. And so I'm gonna move let's out of the way. let's list them out real quick. All right, and I snap. I screenshot that. So, so this, is, this is a great. Oh man, that was rough, man. That was, but I mean, the thing was, we had to come in and we had to. Captain America: Civil War. Best movie, uh, MCU movie of all time. I think I can agree with that. I, I think I feel comfortable saying that. And yeah, but like if somebody asked me, Aaron, yes, what's your favorite? What's the best Marvel movie that exists? Civil War. Civil War. And they would be like, Hmm. Okay. Uh, I see yeah, what you said. I can see that. I get that. And yeah. if they went, Aaron, what's the worst Marvel movie that exists? I can Third go. Dark World. Thor, Thor well, Dark World. And if you ask me, like, what's the top three? Ragnarok, Guardians of the Galaxy. Ragnarok, Guardians of the Galaxy. And Hell they'd yeah. be like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Civil War, Ragnarok, yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy. Iron Man is that number nine. Ant Man and the Wasp is Ant, Ant Man. I re- I'm glad Ant Man and Spider Man are I, in those top. I agree top. with our top five. I agree with our top Hands five. Down. I even agree with our top six. To be honest with you, I agree with our top seven. I would yeah. have. To, would you rank Avengers above Winter Soldier? I think I would. Yeah, remember we ranked. Yeah, that's uh, true. Avengers I would. above Winter Soldier. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I think I th- Doctor Strange is so low. <laughs> it's it's it, it's good. It deserves to be down there. Look how crazy Thor, Thor Dark World, number two. Thor Ragnarok, Thor Ragnarok is number two. It's amazing. That's how much they fixed that movie. They That's fixed that series. Um. Let's see. So, let's Civil War, up. Ragnarok, Guardians of the Galaxy. Ant Man. Yes. Spider Man Homecoming. Yes. The that event, is a fantastic lineup. That's a top lineup. five. That's a fantastic lineup. Top five there. T- bottom five. First Avenger. Yes. The Progressively Hulk. getting worse here. Yes. Dark, Doctor Strange. Yes. Thor. Now we're just saying these are bad movies because Thor. these are both with Doctor Strange. Yeah, like like Captain America up to up till sixteen I'll say eh. Yeah, like, but when we get to when we get, we get at least to eighteen, Doctor Strange, once you get like, Doctor Strange down, like, I'm just like these movies are bad. These are bad movies. Yeah, these movies are bad. Yes. Where where if someone asked me, it's, it's not that we're saying Doctor Strange is a bad movie. We're just saying anything worse than this is a bad movie. For the most part. Yeah. And if and, and if anybody would ask me in any kind of definitive way, is is Thor Dark World a bad movie? I'd be like, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah, it's bad. Yeah, it's bad. Um, and sitting right around the middle, Ant Man and the Wasp and Iron Man three. And I think it's fair to put Ant Man and the Wasp there. Uh, I'm surprised every time I do this, Iron Man comes out in the middle, which makes me feel like Iron Man is my litmus or my watermark for whether I judge a movie good or no. Bad. I think I think Iron Man is where we. I think Ant Man and the Wasp is going to be kind of that middle marker. Iron Man. Oh, you switch out batteries? No, I'm all done. Oh. Keep going. So I'm still recording on this guy. Iron Man and Higher are, I would are, are, are good. Iron Man 3 and Loki are starting to argue. I'm starting to argue why movies are getting worse. Right, and I'm using Iron Man not necessarily as a good or bad. I'm just saying it's my benchmark for quality. Yeah, Iron Man or Ant Man and the Wasp can be used as a benchmark for quality. And Iron and the Wasp is higher or lower? Uh, Ant Man and the Wasp is one below Iron Man. I wouldn't put it down there, but on this list, it's the only place it fits. Yeah. But, you, I mean, you have 15. They have to go somewhere. I mean... I would rank Iron Man higher than Ant-Man wants. Because I feel like Ant-Man does better already. Yeah. If you want to see a good Ant-Man movie, watch Ant-Man. Watch Ant-Man. Like, because remember we said we said you would say Ant Man and the Wasp if they did, but they did a couple of things that Iron Man you think didn't. Yes, do ten thousand percent. Yes. So, but yeah. like but I said, it's not a bad movie. No, it's no. right there on that benchmark, and I did not have a bad time. Like, like I said, but it's no Thor Ragnarok. It's no Spider Man. Oh. So.
Yeah, it's so simple. Yeah, so it's so simple. It's so simple. It's so simple. Like, if somebody... This is a good list. If somebody came to me... This is a good list. Hey, what's your product?